The following is a presentation of Channel 11 Sports. It's time for New York Yankees baseball. With big league excitement, Bronx Bomber style. Live, right here on New York's only Yankees baseball station, Channel 11, WPIX. From frigid Tiger Stadium in Detroit, WPIX Sports presents New York Yankee Baseball. Tonight, the Yankees meet the Detroit Tigers. Starting pitches for tonight's game are Melito Perez for the Yankees and Eric King for Detroit. Hi, everybody. Welcome to New York Yankee Baseball. Phil Rizzuto along with Bobby Mercer and Tom Seaver a little later on. And, Bobby, the Yankees have won uh, their first two ball games and away... There's always one team that jumps out in front and has a hot streak at the beginning, and they pick up on everybody. And that was the case with uh, Oakland a couple of years ago. Toronto right now 5-0. and oh. Well, the Yankees have won two big ball games simply because I think they've beaten uh, two of the best pitchers in all of baseball, uh, Roger Clemens and Frank Viola. Uh, it's always great to get off to a good start, but it's only two games, and there's 160 more games to go. Uh, but there's a lot of optimism flowing around the Yankee clubhouse right now. Well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, they're all happy the way they're playing ball now, and, and you get a different hero every day. I think that's the only way you're going to win a penny. You can't bank on one or two guys to carry the whole season. Well, I think one of the great things the Yankees did in this uh, Yankee homestand opening up the season is the fact that they didn't give up. I mean, uh, uh, Clemens actually dominated this ball club until about the fifth or sixth inning and the Yankees uh, came back to beat him uh, in the sixth inning. Same thing happened Same last night against Viola, so uh, they're not a give-up ball club. No, they definitely aren't. And tonight we're going to get our first look a real in the start of the season, Melito Perez. Well, I think this is really a, a new lease on life for Melito Perez. Uh, last year, he was stuck in the bullpen with the Chicago White Sox. I don't think he really liked it, even though he pitched well out of the bullpen for the White Sox. He's going to get a chance to start for the Yankees this year. That's what he's always wanted to do. He started uh, for the Chicago White Sox before going to the bullpen, so I think he feels uh, more relaxed in the starting role. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, he's going to have some guys that uh, he's going to have to pitch very well to because they've got some bombers over here. Oh, they do, and, and uh, Detroit has had the, uh, last year, they scored over five runs a game. Well, they scored, uh, like, I think, about 817 runs, which uh, computes to about uh, a little over five runs uh -huh. per game this year. Uh, they are giving up uh, about four runs per game, so they score a lot of runs, but they also give up a lot of runs, yeah. too. and of course, they got Cecil Fielder, who is... That right field uh, stance for him is getting pretty cozy. I saw he's got right field. Forget about it. This guy <laughs> can hit it out of any place. I know, but two of his three <laughs> homers have been in the right field bleachers, one in the upper deck. I'll tell you what, if you've never seen Cecil Fielder hit, you've got to tune in tonight because this guy is just oh. awesome. He's awesome, baby, just like <laughs> Vitel would say. He is really <laughs> that way. And uh, we'll be back with the starting lineups right after this. is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a Bud. And by your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. And by Nobody Beats the Wiz Home Entertainment Centers. For everything in home electronics, music, and movies, nobody beats the Wiz. Hello, everybody, and welcome to beautiful Tiger Stadium in a chilly Detroit, as Scooter talked about in the opening. Bobby Mercer just asked me, what's the temperature? I'm guessing it's 36 degrees. Very chilly here in Detroit for the first of this three-game series. The Tigers, who have not won yet, and the Yankees, who have not lost yet. And on the mound for the Detroit Tigers, Eric King, and he will look at a New York Yankee undefeated lineup that will be like this tonight. Randy Velarde leads it off and plays shortstop. Don Mattingly hits in the second spot and plays first. Roberto Kelly, the center fielder, hits third. Mel Hall in left field tonight. He'll bat cleanup. Danny Tardiville is a DH, and he hits fifth. Matt Noakes does the catching. Jesse Barfield in right field. He hits seventh. Charlie Hayes, the third baseman, hits eighth. And Pat Kelly, the second baseman, hits ninth. And on the mound, Eric King. Six foot two, 220 pound right hander, right over the top, fastball and curveball. Last year, six and 11 with Cleveland. He split the season actually between Cleveland and 
the Cleveland uh, and the Colorado Springs Ball Club, excuse me. And he is 28 years old today. Looking for a birthday present, making his 1992 season debut here as the Detroit Tigers are trying to get on the winning side. They lost three games to the Toronto Blue Jays. Toronto won again today. They scored two runs in the bottom of the ninth inning and defeated Baltimore four to three. Oh, the Blue Jays off to a great start, 4-0. And the Yanks right on their trail with two wins and no losses. Buck Showalter with Steve Howe on his left and on his on the screen left, excuse me, and Frank Howard to Buck Showalter's left. Trying to make his ball club 3-0 here tonight. And the boys. Bobby Mercer got their long johns on tonight. It is chilly here. Let me ask you one question before the game starts. It's cold and it's damp. And for the pitcher's advantage, uh, there's really not a whole lot of advantage because it's hard to get the field on the ball, right, Tom? Well, you work a little bit faster. If there's one individual on the field that has an advantage, it's the pitcher because he's the one expending the most energy. And when he's not on the mound, he can go back and find a warm place in the dugout. All right, Randy Velarde leads it off for the Yankees, and he takes one over for a called strike. Velarde has done the job. Mike Gallego on the disabled list. He has not played a game, a regular season game for the Yankees as of yet. Beautiful pitch by Eric King, and Velarde is in the hole 0 and 2. The first three for the Yankees, Velarde, Mattingly, and Kelly. And quite a story about er Eric King. It was a few years ago when he was with the Tigers. Uh, he had a little falling out with Sparky Anderson. Now he's back. Out low and outside. It's also Eric King, Eric King's 28th birthday today. It's been his first three major league seasons here in Detroit. And then he went on to the White Sox and the Cleveland Indians, and then the Tigers finally signed the right-handers a free agent uh, in January. Curveball hit out of the right field. Carry on is there to make the catch, and there's one down. Good curveball by King. And Velarde was way out in front. A big ballpark. This ballpark definitely will be to the advantage of the left-hand hitter. Just 325 down the right field line. 340 down the left field line. And a monster shot to center field. 440 feet. That's a little bit out of Manley's range right there. <laughs> I think Cecil can hit it out there. <laughs> he can. <laughs> Manley takes a call strike. The umpires tonight behind home plate is Al Clark at first base Larry Barnett second base is Greg Kosk and Dale Ford at third Mattingly grounds one to the well I guess you would say one of the most stable second baseman around today and Lou Whitaker say what what a job Lou Whitaker and Alan Trammell have done for this ball club you talk about strength up the middle this club has had it for a few years they've they? had it since 1970 there's talk about this may be the last year for these two contract disputes and whether the ball club will re-sign Whitaker he's talking about moving on and he and Trammell have been playing together since 1978 longest combination obviously in the big leagues a lot of things going on here in Detroit talking about selling this ball club talking about maybe building a brand new ballpark and Roberto Kelly strike one to Kelly Kelly's got four RBIs on the season big hit last night as he scored, uh, knocked in the first run for the Yankees, then Danny Tartable followed with a two-run double. Yankees won it. This time, he's going to ground to the right side. Whitaker once again over to Fielder, and the Yankees go one, two, three here at the top of the first at the end of one-half inning here in Detroit. It's the Yankees nothing, and the Tigers coming to bat. All right, we go to the bottom of the first inning here in Detroit. Melito Perez on the mound for the Yankees, and... The Tigers will send the lineup. It looks like this. Dan Gladden leads it off, plays left field. Lou Whitaker hits second and plays second. Alan Trammell in the three spot. He's the shortstop for the Tigers. Cecil Fielder, Tiger first baseman in the cleanup spot. Mickey Tettleton does the catching and hits fifth. Tony Phillips, the DH, hits sixth. Mark Carrion, the former Met, is in right field. He hits seventh. Travis Fryman, youngest member of the ball club, plays third base. And Milt Kyler. And the number nine spot, the center fielder for Detroit. And on the mound, Melito Perez making his first start here this season for the Yanks. 
Perez, six foot four, 180 pounds, a big man, 26 years old. And the Yanks would like to get him on track, Bobby. Well, the first pitch from Perez is down low for a ball as Dan Gladden steps in. Uh, Gladden, of course, with the world champion Minnesota Twins, and he signs as a free agent with the Detroit Tigers. Cues this one off the end of the bat foul. So the count goes to one and one. It'll be Glad, Lou Whitaker, and Allen Travel, the first three here in the bottom of the first inning here at Tiger Stadium. The Yankees did not score in the top half the first. I think old Danny, he feels a little bit uh, slighted, you know, that he's done, he did such a great job uh, in his mind, and he did do a good job for the Minnesota Twins, and then all of a sudden, they don't want to sign him to the type of contract that he wants, and he has to move on and sign with the Detroit Tigers. Really a financial decision more than anything else, on both sides, probably. And therefore, call strike, and that will even the count up at two and two. But more interesting is Belito Perez. This youngster is really a, I guess you would say, more of a puzzle than anything else. He's got four good pitches. He just seems to be so inconsistent. That's outside for a ball three and two. Got a real live fastball, a good slider, a changeup, and an outstanding fork ball. And I think the Chicago White Sox, Sammy Ellis, who was with the White Sox last year as a pitching coach, I think he thought that Melito may uh, may have been worrying too much in between starts, so they put him in the bullpen. Randy Velarde up with it, and Mattingly, and they just barely nipped Gladden. And one down, Randy took his time on that and uh, got Gladden just by about a half a step at first. I kind of have my own theory about Melito Perez. I'll take a look at it again. Exactly right. He was very deliberate on the throw to first base. Gladden runs extremely well. Boy, much less than half a step. Look at that. That was really close. Lou Whitaker will step in. What can you say about Lou Whitaker? Nothing but good. Takes the pitch up high. Whitaker stands ninth on the all-time Tiger home run list with the 190. And this year needs uh, 35 hits for 2,000 in his career. Another pitch up high, 2-0, and oh, but has really stabilized second base with power, RBIs, and it can run. Tell you what, you just don't find players like Lou Whitaker and Allen Trammell every day, especially today's one. 3-0 oh now to Whitaker. Just a slight breeze out in center field, blowing a little bit from right field to left field. Pitches in there for a called strike, three and one. Allen Trammell on deck for the Tigers. No score here in the bottom of the first inning with one out. Good pitch by Perez, and that's on uh, that runs the count to three and two. One thing about this Detroit ball club, they will strike out quite a bit. They led the Major leagues and strikeouts as a team last year. But I'll tell you what, they could put some numbers on the board in a hurry. Foul off the left side. We'll be back into the stand and out of play. I was mentioning before, Bobby, I, might, I really have my own theory about Melito Perez. For three years, he was in that starting rotation with the Chicago White Sox back in 1988. And then last year, they put him in the bullpen. I, I really believe it's too many fork balls. He has a real good fork ball, but I was watching him warm up. He has an excellent fastball and a nasty slider. And I think a lot of times players, there's a base on balls for Whitaker, young pitchers, will fall in love with that split finger and get away from the basics of the game, throwing that fastball and the good hard slider, which he does have. If you don't have those pitches, you know, you can't use them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's possibly what, ha what happened, and it affected his overall stuff. Well, he lost Whitaker. That'll bring up Allen Trammell. Trammell with one RBI, but more importantly, Allen Trammell was bothered by back spasms almost the entire spring training. So playing tonight in this cool weather, so we got to presume that he's all right. 
Alvarez having problems finding the strike zone. That's the inconsistency that that everybody is talking about. And Perez, uh, I don't think he's thrown a fork ball yet. It's been mainly all fastballs. He's just trying to establish himself out on the mound. Looks he threw like. one to Gladden was all hit it off that one. He queued off the, the end of the off. bat. That yep. was the only one. Yep. Little tapper, Perez, his only play is going to be at first. Whitaker will move down to second. There's two outs. That'll bring up the guy everybody's been talking about, Cecil Fielder. I don't know, Tom. You tell me how you would approach a guy like Cecil Fielder. Being a pitcher in a ballpark such as the Ti as such as Tiger Stadium here, uh, I mean, <laughs> do you pitch to the guy or don't you? I don't pitch to him. I mean, it's it, it, it actually depends on what you have on each individual day. The one thing you don't want to do is let him extend his arms. The guy behind him is no slouch any, anyway, Mickey Tettleton, especially in this ballpark. I mean, a perfect guy to hit behind Fielder, a switch hitter. But you've got to keep the ball in on Fielder. You just can't leave the ball in the middle of the plate. He's the kind of guy that you make a mistake, he's going to hit it 800 miles. Yeah. And even if you don't make a mistake, he can hit 800 miles. Up high for a ball, 1 0. You certainly can't pitch behind on Fielder and expect uh, for him to lay off of a 2 0 or a 3 1 pitch, even a 3 0 pitch. The guy you're talking about hitting behind Fielder in this lineup is Mickey Tettleton, the catcher. A switch hitter with power from both sides. So who do you choose to pitch to? Up high, 2 0. Fielder has three hits this year. Those three hits resulted in three home runs for him. He's got seven RBIs. Well, if you're going to make a 2 0 pitch, that's where you want to. That's where you want to make it on Fielder. <laughs> Cecil's gone. Here's a young kid pitching. Right? <laughs> He threw the slider right down and away on the black on the knees. That's an 0-2 pitch, and he threw it 2 and 0. He went around. First base umpire Larry Barnett said yes, and that'll even account for 2 and 2. It looks like the last three. And I don't know if my eyes are deceiving me. I don't see that well these days. But it looks like the last three pitches, Melito has really popped that fastball. Don't say anything about my eyes either. I won't. I wouldn't dare touch it. Just missing low and outside. Defensive alignment for the Yankees. Even though it's at the bottom of the first inning, this is a big pitch of the ball game coming up. Not, foul off the he would side. not give in to him either. Do the slider on three and two. Do the slider on two balls and no strikes. The slider was from our vantage point up here in the press box watching him warm up. And Mark Connor standing right behind him in the bullpen. His slider was outstanding in the bullpen. And very consistent, good control right where he threw that two and O pitch. Let's see if he comes with it again. Velarde picks it up and throws to Mattingly, but a good pitch by Melito Perez. He did not give in to Cecil Fielder and made some great pitches to uh, the dangerous hitter at Tiger Stadium. At the end of one, there's no score. Yankee fans, this copyrighted telecast is authorized under the rights granted by the New York Yankees solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Yankees and WPIX is prohibited. Well, the first battle of the ball game, Leo Perez against Cecil Fielder. Those are fun. Those are fun little battles. Yes, they are. He chose to go after him, pitch to him, not give in to him, but even with first base open, Bobby, very aggressive and go right after him. And you know, I I, I did mention that even though it was the bottom of the first inning it's still a big oh absolutely this guy. one swing of the bat it's two to nothing oh quickly. yeah we go to the top of the second inning and Mel Hall will lead it off for the Yankees followed by Danny Tartable and Matt Nose 
Ball still looking for his first hit of the 1992 season, and he found that hit back on the play. Well, I guess uh, with Mel Hall playing left field, you've got to figure that Kevin Moss is wondering what the heck is going on. Kevin has not played yet here in 1992. And Right now, Danny Tartable is a designated hitter. He's still uh, in that position simply because his uh, wrist is not 100% healed. So it's better for him to swing the bat and not throw the ball. So they're keeping him out of left field. And that puts Mel Hall out there and leaves Kevin Moss as the odd man out. Hit deep to right center field. Going back is Kyler, and it's gone off the facing of the upper deck in right center. And when Mel Hall breaks out of it and gets his first hit there in 1992, it's impressive. Mel Hall got a fastball up in the strike zone and a rocket right out of, right out of here. Oh, Hall, this butts for you. Boy, he got a mistake. One of the things about Eric King, if he makes mistakes up, his ball is straight as an arrow. And Mel Hall is as good a fastball hitter as there is in the American League. And he tomahawked that ball. He was all over it. Even with the wind blowing in, that ball hit a line drive off the facing of the upper deck. Tartable swings and fouls that up to the right side. No balls and two strikes to Danny Tartable. A big two-run double by Danny last night to win the ball game for the Yankees as they beat the Red Sox at Viola. So Tartable with three RBIs on the year. The Yankees lead it one to nothing. That's inside and low. One ball, two strikes. Well, Mel Hall, last year, he said, if you'll play me, I'll show you I can hit. Of course, Mel is a very vocal type of guy, and he has certainly, uh, what would you say, put the bat where his mouth is? He, he proved himself <laughs> right, didn't yeah. he? Absolutely. Well, he was uh, he was uh, really talking to Stump and saying, look, uh, there's no need to keep me out from playing uh, against left-handed hitters, uh, pitchers. I can still hit left-handers as well as I can right-handers. And he just said, well, if you want to find out, just put me in there, and I'll show you. And a great asset to the Yankees last year. And I like to see that left-handed power. Uh, I mean, I'm an old traditional Yankee, and, and uh, growing up with uh, the Yankees and being there for so many years, I, that left-handed power has meant so much to the Yankees and Yankee Stadium. That pitch fouled off to the right side. I agree with you 100%. That's raised the question and topic you just brought up a second ago about Kevin Moss. Uh, we got a guy that's conceivably a 30 to 40 home run a year, man. But where do you play him? I don't think the Yankees are done with making some moves. I don't think that they're totally sure about their shortstop position. They're not totally set in their outfield. You know, and as things progress, other players may be getting some playing time. Oh, I think to stick Michael anytime he thinks he can improve this ball club, he's going to do it. He's constantly looking for something to uh, do. Of course, the pitching everybody talks about. They wanted to try to improve the starting pitching as much as they can. Right now, Danny Tartable is down at first base. The first walk given up by Eric King and Matt Noakes will step in. Matt did not play last night. He's one for three in the opening series. Pitch down low for a ball, one and oh. Well, this is the time of year that the players bring out the turtlenecks, keep the hot water bottles on the bench. A cold, crisp, cool night here. Off the end of the bat into right field, Matt Noakes and Danny Tartable will stop at second. The Yankees rallying here in the top of the second inning. Nobody out, runners at first and second, and Jesse Barfield will be the batter. King got hit very hard his last two times in spring training. 
In order for him to be effective, he has to pitch his hard stuff fastball, which is straight as an arrow. He has to pitch it in off the plate, both the right and left hand hitters. And got to keep the breaking ball down. Now he, that sequence of pitches to Noakes, he bounced the curveball. And if he loses confidence in that and has to try to pitch to this Yankee team with just his fastball, the Yankees could hit some rockets here tonight. Field for the big swing. He's looking for his first hit here in 1992. Has 20 career home runs versus the Tigers. Also a 293 career hitter here at Tiger Stadium. Runners at first and second for the Yankees. Side corner and Marfield behind in the count 0 and 2. This is the type of night that you expect not a whole lot of runs to be scored because the pitchers really have an advantage, I think, over the hitters, being as cold as it is and as windy. But on the other hand, it uh, could be that a pitcher, like you said, like I. You said maybe they have a, they do have the advantage because they're constantly working and they're not quite as cold as the hitter who has been standing over the batting circle. Absolutely. Still got some feeling and moisture in their hands. I know hitters hated to swing at jam on cold I nights. Did. I wouldn't hit it like that. And pitchers know it too. Popped up right side. Whitaker there to make the catch and the umpire's called. Automatic out. So there's one down. Runners uh, remain at first and second. And the third baseman, Charlie Hayes, will come to the plate. There's Sparky Anderson sending out signs or else keeping his hands warm. One of the two. Sparky, senior manager in the American League. What a little contrast tonight. We got the youngest yep. manager in baseball and Buck Showalter. And we got the Dean sitting over on the other side. See what he's fun to talk to, Sparky. Talking to him before today's ball game. <laughs> I'll tell you, he, uh, he, he, can, he can ramble on. I can, oh, I, I, he's I got can, a lot of Casey. Oh, he's got some Casey. Yes, he does. Down low. You got to be careful with uh, Buck Showalter because uh, Bucky, an aggressive guy, you never know what he's going to do. He's got runners at first and second. Charlie Hayes up. You got to be alive at all times. Foul ball off the left side. Let's pause 10 seconds along the Yankee Baseball Network for station identification. Bobby, talking about Sparky and Casey. Sparky, when he would get six wins here in this season, he'll move past Casey Stingle in the seventh place on the all-time winning list. He has had some kind of career with the Cincinnati Reds and the Detroit Tigers. Right back up the middle, right through the legs of Eric King. Carnival will come around to score. Noakes will go to third, and the Yankees lead it two to nothing. The ball gets away, but no damage. So Charlie Hayes, who is now three for six or four for six on the season, is really smacking that ball. A breaking ball, and Charlie Hayes simply kept his hands back a good piece of hitting right back up the middle between Eric King's legs, and the Yanks go on top two to nothing. And that's going to bring Billy Muffet out of the Tiger dugout to have a visit with Eric King. The Yanks with two runs in here in the top of the second inning. Just one out. And runners still at the corners for him. Tom, it's one thing for a pitcher to be able to have control and, and throw his pitches where he wants to and, and be smart on the mound and be savvy. But it's another thing to also to be able to field your position, too. I mean, if he comes up with that ball, yes, it was hit kind of hard, but 
if you get down quick enough and you come up with it, you turn the double play and there's no run scored and you're out of the inning. It's actually where you end up, the position you end up when you're throwing the ball. And balance at the end of your delivery. And there are not many pitchers that work on that. Not many pitchers will go to spring training and, and think about, well, when I release the ball, am I in good fielding position? Runners at first and third for the Yankees. One down and Pat Kelly at the plate. Kelly pops this one up right side. It won't be far enough, I don't think. Well, now, all of a sudden, the wind catches it, but Whitaker stays with it, but not far enough to score Noakes from third. That wind really took it and fooled Lou Whitaker. I think Lou Whitaker gave up on the ball and was looking for Mark Carrion. And then all of a sudden said, whoop, no, I better take this. Showed a little snow cone. He did. He stopped there. just momentarily, and Carrion was calling for it. And then all of a sudden, it looked like Lou saw that the wind was bringing that ball back toward the infield. He said, "No, I better handle this thing." Usually, the rule is it's the outfielder's ball. That one really bought the ball back toward the infield. Randy Velarde batting for the second time fouls that one off his right leg. Randy, who flied out to right field his first time up. I don't think there's anything that frustrates a hitter more than leaving a runner on at third base with less than two outs. I know it did me. And you can imagine how many times I was frustrated. <laughs> he really had a pretty good pitch to hit, too. Oh, yeah. was up in the hitting zone. But good pitch when you got the runner the over there, you've got to really make it the pitch that you want. Inside and low, one and one. But the youngster, Pat Kelly, these are things that he'll learn. He'll learn as he gains more experience. And I'm sure when he went back to the to the uh, dugout, you know, Mr. Mr. O, Mr. Optimism, Hondo, got him by the side, told him all about it, went over the uh, situation with him. Another foul off the left side. Well, it's a theory of going up there, Hondo. You could you could speculate what Hondo might be saying to Kelly, but. One of the things that you hear so very often from hitting coaches, go up there and look for a pitch that you can hit. Don't go up and hit the pitcher's pitch. Go up and look for up to two strikes. Look for the pitch that you want to hit. If the pitcher doesn't get it, give it to you. There's nothing you can do about it. If he makes his pitches up to two strikes, well, you've got to take him. But you would think Kelly, youngster coming up in the minor leagues, this really his first full year would be looking for a fastball shot but fielder knocks it down will they be able to make the play yes what a play by Cecil fielder at first base the big guy he just smothered that shot off the bat of Randy Velarde to save a run for the Tigers nice play by fielder but the Yankees do come up with two runs highlighted by Mel Hall home run and at the end of one and a half the Yankees lead it two to nothing Part by Hertz. We never forget who made us number one. We're Hertz. We're America's wheels. That's what they called me when I played big boy. Wheels. They called me wheels. They called you wheels because your brain uh, going around. <laughs> We're spinning around. Spinning around. <laughs> uh, touche. Very good. <laughs> I didn't have too many infield hits in my day. I know that. <laughs> Get those butts that you laid down on me and bring me to swearing at you. <laughs> Picking on an old man trying to make the play to first base. Mickey Tettleton leads it off for the Tigers here at the bottom of the second. Tettleton, a switch hitter, turns around and bats left handed against the right hander Perez. Tettleton, Phillips, and Mark, Mark carry on. Yankee lead it two to nothing. That's up high. Two balls and no strikes. Middleton has done an outstanding job in the catching department and the hitting department for the Tigers. That's outside for a ball at high three and zero. Oh. This youngster, I think, has uh, been hurt quite a bit in his career. He's from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, as a matter of fact. I thought I'd get that in there. Last year, he hit 31 home runs and drove in 89 runs for the Tigers. That's down low for a ball. How many times did he strike out? Well, uh, he had his share of strikeouts, too. <laughs> he had 131. This ball club can hit some home runs. 
And they could strike out with Deer and Tettleton and Incavelia and Fielder. Rob, and, oh, gee. Man. But well, they, they get Babe put 10 points on the board, Inca though. Incavelia is not here, so he won't yep. be able to add to that this year. And uh, Lloyd Mosby. Mosby's gone. Those two guys share the outfielder position. They both of them struck out 135 times or so, something like that. Tony Phillips, another switch hitter, a designated hitter tonight for the Tigers. Dick Trzuski down at third, flashing signs. Alex Gramis, who was with Sparky Anderson and the Tigers for so many years, is no longer here. Was with him in Cincinnati, too. Cincinnati they were, too, they yeah. were together. That was one of the odd things in the winter. The parting of the was, ways yeah. of those two. That really surprised me. I, I never really knew what the reason I don't either. Was. I still don't know. And we may never find out either. But they were like brothers, yeah. those two. They were as thick as thieves, and Alex Gramis is not here anymore. Right now, Perez has got to find the strike zone. He's got a two to nothing lead, and he's thrown six balls in a row. Tony Phillips, he's looking for his first base hit. He is uh, a little bit dissatisfied with himself. Was thrown out of yesterday's ball game. <laughs> of course, when you're not hitting, you're 0 for 9. Uh, you get a little bit frustrated. You think those pitches right on the corner are not strikes. Inside and low ball three three and oh so just, looks like he's trying to spot the ball and aim it dropping the elbow and looks like he's trying to aim the ball Bobby exactly right one of the things the young pitchers will do and Perez is still young he's only 26 years old just in his fourth year in the big leagues they'll lose confidence in that fastball and this is a great part for a fastball pitcher when you pitch on the left field side of home plate you got a long way to hit the ball to hit it out of here Phillips is not going to hit the ball out of here if you throw strikes on the outside part of the plate. And he has a good fastball. Melito Perez has an excellent fastball when he throws it. A lot of young pitchers, they'll get in trouble with their fastball a couple times, and then they'll refuse to throw it. They'll lose that confidence in it. Well, he's lost the confidence now because he's walked the first two batters here in the bottom of the second inning. He's not even coming close to throwing a strike, and that brings uh, Mark Connor out of the Yankee dugout to have a little chat with Perez. You can just see that he's aiming. I mean, he's not even rearing back and throwing like he's loose. Oh, that elbow dropping down below the shoulder. Well, that was the uh, problem in Chicago, the inconsistency of Perez. Mm -hmm. He'll give you one inning look, and he'll make you look like he's going to win 20 games every year, and then the next thing you know, he can't find the plate. You know, you said something earlier, Bobby. A little light bulb went off in my head, and he said he's got four good pitches, fastball, curveball, slider, and uh, split finger. Sometimes young pitcher that throws hard doesn't need four pitches. You get a little bit over technical. Mark carry on the batter and that's up high for a ball one and oh. Carry on traded to the Tigers from the New York Mets for a left handed pitcher Paul Gibson. Gibson did an outstanding job for the Tigers last year. I mean he actually I think single handedly saved this bullpen over here. strike thrown by Perez in this inning one and one and the Tigers they weren't even going to think about swinging until he at least threw one strike Tettleton down at second and Tony Phillips on at first nobody out outside for a ball two and one Shades of Jeff Johnson last night. I'm not able to get the ball over the plate. Johnson was really very fortunate to escape with just a couple of runs that he gave up to the Red Sox. And he pitched himself into trouble. A couple of fine plays by Mattingly got him out of trouble. Swing and a miss, strike two, two and two. That's the same theory as last night. And that's exactly what Mark Connor was talking to him about when he went out there. You got to throw strikes. Let those other guys help you get out of trouble. Can't help you, you, just keep walking. Carry on. Last two years for the New York Mets, batting 250, 260. 10 and four home runs, but Perez, Perez rears back and throws that one past carry on. Striking him out, there's one down here in the second. Where did that come from? <laughs> Pretty good pitch. It looked like carry and simply swung right through it. He did, look at that. All ran in just a little bit. 
couldn't leave it in the middle of the plate. That ball ran to the inside corner. 41 degrees here at game time. I was off. I was off by five degrees. I guess with a wind chill of probably 36. Probably at least 36. 46, maybe. <laughs> yeah. That'll bring up Travis Prime in the third baseman. Prime in with one RBI. For years and years, the Tigers looking for a third baseman. I think they finally found him. He was the Tigers' uh, third selection in the 1987 draft. Last year hit 259 for the Tigers, 21 home runs and 91 RBIs. I think they tried everybody and the kitchen sink at third base the last four or five years for the Tigers. High and inside. Well, he he did add uh, to the strikeout total of the team last year, striking out 149 times. <laughs> It was a team effort, wasn't it? It was a team effort. <laughs> well, he came up. He was going to take Alan Trammell's place. He was going to be the next shortstop. And Alan Trammell says, hold on here. Not so fast. This one off the end of the bat, a high fly ball in the right field. Barfield with the beat on it. And there's two outs. The runners remain at first and second. Mickey Tettleton and... Second base, looking at Jesse Barfield and knowing the gun that he has, that there's no place to go. He wasn't more than six feet from second base when Jesse caught that ball. And he's motioning to Barfield now, but get the ball over there. A speedster center fielder, Milt Kyler. Another switch hitter. Three switch hitters in the lineup for the Tigers tonight. Off the end of the bat, this should get Perez out of it. Kelly up with it to Mattingly, and it looked like it was going to be disastrous for Melito Perez, but he pitches out of it, and at the end of two, the Yankees lead it two zip. <laughs> Just a moment to look at our classic quote tonight. I don't care if the team is up for sale. If you want to run a business, you've got to pay the price. You've got to put the coin in the slot. This is not a popcorn and candy business. But one of the taglines you could say is not a pizza business either, huh? Well, it With is right Detroit. now, but it may not be much longer. <laughs> that quote by Lou Whitaker, who wants the Tigers to extend, I'm sure, and enrich his contract. But you brought it up before, Bobby, about Tom Monahan, who has put this club up for sale. Talked about selling it and a possibility of a new ballpark here in Detroit, whether it would be in the suburbs, whether they need it at all, whether this classic old place should be torn down. I love the old ballparks. I think this is a wonderful place. A lot of politics in it. Yeah. They've had one survey that said, well, it's not safe anymore. It has to be done. There was another survey done that says, no, this ballpark is in fine shape. Physically, it's fine. It's not falling down the way that Wrigley Field was in fact falling down in Chicago. Top of the third inning, uh, Don Mattingly leads it off for the Yankees. That pitch is down low for a ball. Mattingly mounts to the second baseman his first time up. The Tigers, uh, they've had a policy here for many, many years that they do not negotiate contracts during the season. Uh, they've got some uh, players that they're going to have to deal with, and Lou Whitaker happens to be one of them. Cecil Fielder will be one of them. And they have mentioned in the papers that there's a possibility that they might break that policy and try to get a couple of guys signed, especially Cecil Fielder. Mattingly just got underneath that one. High fly ball to center field. Tyler makes the catch, and there's one down. I don't know, Tom, you talk about uh, building a new ballpark, you talk about selling a ball club, but you also got to think if you're a buyer and looking at a franchise, you got to think, well, uh, you know, if I pay the price now, what's going to happen in 1993 and 94, you know, with the, uh, the players and the owners again, that's got to be settled before somebody comes in here. They're talking about the, the television, rich money is not going to be there anymore. I mean, that's got to be a concern to a new buyer, so. A lot of things that a new buyer would have to look at. 
Certainly anybody that's going to ante up and pay 150 or 200 million dollars or whatever it would take to to buy a franchise like the Tigers. You talked about it last night about possibility of the Red Sox being for sale. That's got to be a, a hefty price tag. And what uh, what condition is going to exist after 1993? One more year on the network contract. And a lot of people say yes. That kind of money is not going to be there. It's going to be reduced by a third. Well, that will significant, significantly affect how the front office is operated and the salaries paid. A lot of salaries today are paid past that 1993 season. Two balls and a strike to Roberto Kelly. One down here to top the third. The Yankees out in front two to nothing. Roberto with that uh, change of stance, I guess you would say, with his hands up a little bit higher than he had last year, but he's done an excellent job this year with that stance. The count now three and one. Roberto is a good all-around player. He can play the outfield, he can run, he can hit, he can hit for power. And he lines this one in the center field for a base hit. He doesn't say much, he just goes out and does his job. They were talking about batting Roberto in the leadoff spot. Finally ended up batting him third, and he has really responded. I think he's going to do a number of a fine job in that number three spot, Bobby. He I is a too. fine, talented athlete. He, he and they fiddled around with him last year, and he very well could have pouted and sulked and not wanted to play. They brought Bernie Williams with Williams in the center, moved Kelly out over to left field, and he is a fine athlete and a good center fielder. And paid his dues, and the youngster came along, and they just handed him the job. But Kelly just kept on playing, kept on playing. I think they finally got it figured out. And he's your center fielder, and he is a number three hitter. If you just leave him there, don't bounce him around. Don't hit him here in the lineup. Hit him in there in the lineup. Hit him back at first. Drive him to seventh. Put him in third, and you're hitting third every day until you want a day off, and then you come let me know. Well, a lot of guys know what their roles are today. Mel Hall knows what his role is. The ball hit the plate, gets away from Mickey Tettleton, so Kelly moves to second. about King if he gets in trouble to get that breaking ball down in the dirt and that one just in behind the plate Tettleton trying to reach out and stop it before it can take that awkward bounce high enough for Kelly easily to get the second base and one out Hall hit a monstrous home run back in the second inning leading off put the Yankees out in front one to nothing in the right center field about 430 feet away Side quarter for a called strike. Took a little bit off of it. Pretty good change up by King. Mel Hall. Look where Mel is. Yep, he's <laughs> way out. On, on well, he hit that fastball on the line right out of here for the first run for the Yanks. And King, a good pitch. That's one of the best pitches he's thrown all night. Yeah. Eric saying, look, you know, I can't stand too many of those 425 30 foot home runs. Now just getting a piece of that one. See, sometimes a hitter will tell you what kind of pitch they want to swing at. <laughs> there was a fastball He's not up about, for a fastball, just about the brim of his hat. And he said, yeah, I'll heck at this one. One ball, two strikes to Hall. Kelly down at second. legs of Eric King once again. Kelly will come around to score. Hall picks up his second RBI and the Yankees lead it three to nothing. The second time that Eric King has let a ball go through his legs. You mentioned it before Bobby in fielding position and King just doesn't quite get on balance. He actually has his feet in the right position but his body balance wasn't good and he really genuflex. That's one of the most difficult plays, however, for a pitcher to make. That ball that's hit back of you talked about before, right back at you, and you really don't know how hard it's hit. And you reach for it, and sometimes it just is not there. 
the time you do reach for it and it's not there all of a sudden it's coming by and it's through your legs and it's it's one of those judgments that's so very difficult and the only way you make that play is to, is to have excellent body balance after you deliver the ball. Tarnabo who walked back in the second came around to score on a Hayes RBI single. So Danny officially not at bat yet but has scored a run. And Eric King in for a call strike. Oh, and two now to Tartable. Tartable with a lot of power to the opposite field. Of course, signed as a notable free agent for $25 million in 1992. Has yet to play in the field. That's up high for a ball, one and two. Hampered by a sore wrist, uh, which he hurt in spring training, diving for a ball in the outfield. Boy, it was a who's who's disabled list after the first day of the season, 1992. They were dropping like flies. I think this Cardinal Ball Club, I think they lost like four guys after the second day. Four starters. Did you read the team in the paper day? One of the local papers had a disabled list team. It was like oh, an yeah. all-star oh, yeah. team. Uh, I did read that. Nolan Ryan, the pitcher, and uh, Rob Dibble, the, the relief pitcher. And... I mean, it was a pretty good ball club. There goes the runner, and Tartable bounces it back to Luke Whitaker, who puts the tag on Bell Hall, but he's unable <laughs> to complete the double play. It was one of those bang bang plays and of course you want to make the play at second base before you do anything else and look at Lou you can see him right there just waiting for the ball but Mel Hall is right there. Whoop. And then he tries to run into Lou. All legal. Mel Hall is still on the baseline. It, well I don't know about the elbow may not have been legal <laughs> but. Uh... It's legal if you don't see it. <laughs> Anyway, it prohibited Whitaker for completing the double play. Ball gets away from Tettleton, but Tartable cannot advance. That's one of those situations. The runner at first can't see through the catcher, doesn't know exactly where the ball was. Noakes with a base hit to right field, his first time up, so he's one for one in the ball game. Two outs here in the top of the third. Yankees on top, three nothing. Good off speed pitch by Eric King. What a great ballpark. For a Matt Noakes, huh? Here in Yankee yeah, Stadium. Really. Boy, oh boy. Of course, he played several years here with the Detroit Tigers. But I mean, for, with his swing, this is a perfect ballpark for him. Cute off the end of the bat. This could be trouble. Travis Fryman, he hesitated. There'll be no play on Noakes at first. A base hit. It's not how hard you hit them sometimes, it's where you hit them when you come up with a base hit. So Matt, two for two in the ball game. And that will bring up Jesse Barfield. Travis Feynman in between. He actually came in, stopped as if he was going back to third. There wouldn't have been a play at third. Noakes, who does not run well at all. And had Tryman Fryman been very aggressive on that, he had a chance at Matt Noakes. That's a little bit of inexperience there. I think he thought maybe King was going to make the play, and that's when he hesitated just for that uh, half a second. It looked like he was going back to third to defend against Tartaball coming into third, but Danny, he wasn't even around second base yet. Activity now in the Tiger bullpen. Barfield popped up on the infield his first time up, so he's over one. of our field. Well, you take a look at this Tiger ball club. They're still looking for their first win here in 1992. And basically the same type of ball club that they had last year, I think. Just missing low and outside. 2-0 to our field. Or a shaky pitching staff. They're going to score some runs because they're going to hit a lot of home runs. They surprised a lot of people last year. Of course, they finished second. 
record of 84 and 78, playing over 500, seven games out of first. Yeah, but they were right up in Bob. Bob right you're exactly there. right, right up in the middle of August. Wide in the left field. Gladden cannot come up with it. Tartamo around third. He'll score. They're going to hold notes up at third. And Jesse Barfield with another RBI. The Yankees now lead a four to nothing. And they've come to play here at Tiger Stadium. A ball up in the strike zone every time that the Yankees have teed off. It seems that the ball has been up. King has left it up and out over the plate right where he's gotten in trouble. We mentioned before hit fairly hard the last two times that he pitched in spring training. And the Yanks have really been pounding on him. Tettleton's going to go out and talk with him. Sparky Anderson trying to buy some time in this situation. The Yankees four to nothing now and that ball hit by Jesse Barfield he hit a rocket out there Gladden and left field had no chance of catching up with it. a line drive a couple of hops off that wall that's 340 feet down that left field line this is not a ballpark built for a right handed power hitter a left handed power hitter a lot different and your defense they've been standing out there a long time they don't like that this cold weather they begin to lose interest. It's just human nature. Here comes Sparky Anderson. This is probably going to be all. For Eric King. Kevin Ritz is warming up for the Tigers. Charlie Hayes, the batter. First base is open. Slow walk out to the mound by Sparky. Sparky's always been a great one to come out and do a little groundkeeping when he gets to the mound. You notice that? Never steps on the white line. Never steps on the white line. He's got that little hippity hop yep. as he gets over that white line. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be all for Eric King. Kevin Rich will come on, and while the pitching change is being made, let's take time out along the Yankee Baseball Network for the following message. Pitcher for the Tigers, Kevin Ritz from Eatonstown, New Jersey. The youngster is six foot four, 220 pounds, and he's put the season between the Mud Hens and the Tigers last year. But the Tigers appeared in 11 ball games, so it's 0 and 3. And he comes on to face Charlie Hayes. Eric King started. The Yankees have clipped him for four runs. Yankees also have uh, two of Eric King's runners on base right now, second and third. Yankees pounding King with seven hits. That's a good stop by Mickey Tunnel. That saved a run right there. The count is 2 0. Oh. He played for the Mud Hens, huh? Played for the Mud Hens. A lot of people don't know where the Mud Hens play, but you well, and I do. They're don't just you? down the street there in Toledo. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever play in Toledo? I sure did. You sure? It used 19, to be a Yankee farm club. About 1966, you played That's there. That's correct. Oh, yeah. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, sir, Tom Seymour. Yes, you did. <laughs> I remember that. Stan Bonson was on that ball club. Let's see now, where were you? Uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Well, yeah. You Stan, bon Stan Bonson played for for, uh, for Toledo that year. Yep. Stan the man Bonson. Mm -hmm. Way out in front, and Charlie Hayes pops it up on the infield. This could be an adventure, but. Fielder is there to take charge, and finally the Yankees are put out here in the top of the third inning, but they did come up for two runs, and at the end of three and a half, it's the Yankees four and the Tigers nothing. A quick look at the nobody beats the Wiz scoreboard. Toronto got two in the bottom of the ninth to beat the Orioles, and the Blue Jays are 4-0 oh, undefeated. Texas and Minnesota will be Witt against the Panny. Milwaukee, California will be Bones against Lewis. Kansas City, Seattle, Davis against Delusia. Chicago and Oakland, Fernandez against Duzarski. Over in the National League, the Mets got shut out in their home opener, four to nothing. The Expos beat them. St. Louis two, Chicago one. That was an extra innings. Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, 
One to nothing in Pittsburgh in the third inning. San Francisco, Atlanta. Atlanta got four runs in the bottom of the first inning. Cincinnati, Houston, and LA, San Diego later. Van Gladden leads it off the Tigers here in the bottom of the third. Hits it with sharply, but right at Charlie Hayes. Almost knocked Hayes down, but stayed with it. Playing in on the grass, uh, expecting that uh, maybe Gladden may be bunting, but stayed with it, and there's one down. That'll bring up Lou Whitaker. Those are not boos that you hear in the background. That's for Lou, Lou, Lou here at Tiger Stadium, and they have given him a lot of thrills. A lot of times I wish my name was Lou. <laughs> a lot of times you thought your name was Lou. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Tigers are still looking for their first base hit of the ball game. Yankees have pounded out seven base hits and four runs. Good pitch by Perez. 0-2 to count out of Whitaker. Fourth ball lifted off the left side. It'll be out of play. And I think that they're having so much trouble deciding what they're going to do with the ballpark. They just don't know where to put it. Some uh, want it closer to downtown. Others want it out towards Ann Arbor. One ball, two strikes to Whitaker. Most of the population in this area, about four or five million people, are around that Ann Arbor area. And they come downtown to watch the ball games here at Tiger Stadium. Great place to watch a ball game. A lot of seats far away in center field, but still those back here behind known plate down the lines are really right on top of the field. Did he go around? Yes, he did. Said third base umpire Dale Ford. First strikeout, second strikeout, that is, for Perez. There's two down here in the third. Take a look from the center field camera. Did he or didn't he? And Dale Ford at third base is, yep, ring him up. Well, if Mark Connor and the Yankees can tap that wealth of ability that Lito Perez has, it will be a big shot in the arm for the Yankee pitching staff. Alan Trammell 0 for 1 tonight. Out out of play. Trammell is about as solid as they come at shortstop. Numbers up on the board. We got power. This time, first place umpire, Larry Barnett, said no, he did not go around. Not real flashy, but what no. you would call a technically a very pure shortstop, I would think, Bobby. Very does, pure. Does things the way really you would want to see them on an instructional film. You know, if you take a look at Travis Fryman and Alan Trevor, they sort of, you know, they run kind of alike, they kind of hit alike, and it looked a lot alike. And I think that's the reason a lot of people said, well, he may be the heir apparent to Alan Trammell. They have a lot of similarities. Of course, that'd be all right with the Tigers if they <laughs> had the same type of similarities. Yeah, it'd be all right with Travis same. Fryman, too. Yeah. <laughs> Perez runs the count to three and two with two outs to Trammell here in the bottom of the third. Of course, Trammell has been bothered off and on now by injuries uh, quite a bit in the last couple of years. The numbers fell down last year, batting only 248 and nine home runs. All of a sudden, Al Clark just right in the middle of the swing. Uh, I mean, of the uh, delivery by Belito Perez. Alan Trammell looked like that possibly he hit the catcher's glove 
on his way back. You can see how he swings the bat back and forth. That's a timing process. That's down low, ball four. Well, he was way out in front of Alan Trammell, but he loses him to a walk. That's number four of the night. And that'll bring up Esu, Cecil Fielder. up here just to give you some idea about the size of this guy six foot three two hundred and fifty pounds and that may be uh, exaggerating just a little bit on the low side <laughs> he said he lost 30 30 pounds going to spring training that possibly 275 pounds at the end of last season Two strikes. He wants that one back, doesn't he? Whew. No doubt he was looking for something. You're looking for something else, that's right. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to go to the plate every time <laughs> knowing that you've got a chance to hit the ball out of the ballpark? I don't know, I hit it out of the ballpark, got a chance to hit it 500, 600 feet. Yeah. have runners at first and third with two out here in the bottom of the third. Well, it pays to be strong. This is a guy who can hit the ball 600 feet and got jammed and just hit a little flare right past Randy Velarde. And the Tigers with a two out rally. He's got some bees in those hands. Got <laughs> <laughs> to bring up Mickey Tattleton, who walked back in the second. First hit for the Tigers in this ball game. the Tigers Bobby they can play catch up in a hurry ball club that will hit a lot of home runs and they have that potential to play catch up boy in just a wink of an eye swing and a miss strike one one and one Tettleton's no small guy either Tettleton is six foot two two hundred and twenty pounds and there's no fat on Mickey Tettleton Ooh. I mean he is solid steel That pine tar ruling, really, those uh, batters, they just put the pine tar anywhere they put to the bat now, don't they? <laughs> They've got it way up above the trademark. <laughs> I mean, used to, you know, 15, 10, 15 years ago, you wouldn't even put it that close to the trademark. Not even I mean, close to that. Oh, yeah. Ever since that George Brett ruling at Yankee Stadium, the guys have really been leading. What a great play by him, and Perez is there to take the throw. Mattingly saved at least two runs by that play. Well, that's the reason he wins the gold glove, and that's the reason everybody on the infield loves Don Mattingly playing first base. At the end of four innings of play, the Yankees lead it 4 nothing. Innings has left five Tigers on base. Scooter and he was saved by the Don Mattingly play, wasn't he? Oh, I mean that I mean that's as good a play as you'd want to see in a clutch play like that, too. This would have gone down the corner and two runs could have easily scored. Well, the Yanks on top as we go to the top of the fourth inning. It'll be Pat Kelly, Randy Velarde, and Don Mattingly. 
against the second Tiger pitcher and Kevin Ritz. The line on Eric King, he was a starter for the Tigers, two and two thirds innings, four runs all earned on seven hits. And strike out anyone. And walk the hitter. Will that get in the gap? No. Carry on runs it down. So Pat Kelly still looking for his first base hit. Hit it hard, but carry and run it down for their first out here in the top of the fourth. Well, take a look at that Mattingly play again oh, here, Scooter. Boy, well, watch this one. I mean, it's a bad hop, too. Look, it's by him. He reaches out and almost falls down. Doesn't panic and takes his time. Makes a nice throw to Polito. You know, I want something, Tom. I didn't. I didn't realize that Carrion had the glove on the right hand. If he doesn't have that glove on the right hand, he doesn't catch that ball and count. That, and he bats right-handed. That's unusual, isn't it? A left-handed thrower and yeah. uh, a right-hand hitter. Yep. There have not been very many of them in the big leagues. Cleon Jones was one. That's right. He I was. Can't, and there was there were a couple of more because I read that ages and ages ago. I can't remember. There were a couple. Oh, there's not been very many. Randy Velarde. That ball ran right in on him there. And fouled it off for strike one. Looked like it might have hit his fingers to begin with, Scooter, but no, nope, no. Nope. Yeah, get a few. Ooh. Ooh. He's glad it hit the bat, not the fingers, especially yeah. on this cold night. Velarde is 0 for 2. You know, I heard you and Bobby talking about all the guys on the DL list. Is it a DL? The disabled list, yeah. Disabled. There have been a lot of them. This, I heard Early that. in the season. Downstairs, one of the reporters was saying there were 80 some odd on the disabled list right now. 80 something. That's hard to believe, isn't it? No, uh, not really. When you divide it out, you know that's maybe three and a half, three and a half per club. Oh, yeah. And you've got yeah, some pitchers exactly. that are on long-term rehab, disabled yeah. list, etc. So. And by the point Bobby Mercer was making the. But four St. Louis Cardinals already got hurt. Yeah, yep. It's two on one play, I think. But you know, the thing that gets me, I wonder, I think they're doing too much exercise. I think, I mean, of course, we never exercise tonight. Well, I've noticed that you've cut your exercise. Three and two to Malardi, fellas. You don't do nearly as much as, no. as you did the first year I got here. You, no. I used to come up in the booth and you'd be doing jumping jacks and toe touchers and some of those deep knee bands. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you did. Thank you. you used to. You know, I used to see you work out a lot. Now you kind of wear your Mother Teresa hat. You've got to lead a more sedentary life up here. I noticed that. Three and two again to Velarde. Right by it. Right three to nine. down Broadway, yeah. wasn't it? You used to hit those a long way, Scooter, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Well, this was one of my favorite parts. This had to be a great park for oh, you, huh? Oh, man, I got five hits in one game here. All that space in the outfield, you hit yep. it between the outfielders and run like a rabbit. Well, that's true. There's some parks, you got a lot more room between yeah, the absolutely. foul lines. Sounds strange. Two outs here in the top of the fourth inning. Yanks on top, four to nothing. Don Matting the 0 for 2. Off the end of the back. Will Kyler get there? He makes the play. No, he does not. Looks like he got his glove on it. Then they're going to play on Mattingly, and he's in there. <laughs> Boy, some poor defense by the Tigers on that play. They had a chance at Mattingly. And Whitaker came off the base. And then Kyler made a a weak throw to second base. Looked like he caught this to begin with. Scooter. It did, yep. I never had it. That's right. That should be a base hit for uh, Mattingly. And look where Whitaker is. He came off the bat. They had a chance to get Mattingly there. Dale Ford got spiked almost on that play. Yeah. It'll bring up Roberto Kelly, who is one for two. They give him a double on that? I would think so. I would think so too. Now the scoreboard here in Detroit 
towards the auxiliary scoreboard, they don't have the base hits. And the scoreboard in center field, which has the line score, they take off and they show the players' average and they yeah. run some of the scores in the American League. So you can't really tell. We can't tell until they put that line score back up. I wish they would have one of those up all the time. They, they really do. But For the John, fans and everybody. That's why we got John Moore here. Dandy little. And as soon as he comes up with that information, he's going to pass it along to us, too. He gave, so he gave me the double sign. Two fingers. You know, he is the executive producer, producer, and director. Scooter, we went over this last we night. We did. Now. Yeah. With uh, the boss and stuff, you must have some heavy expenses. Well, listen, coming. we're about a thousand miles away, you know. <laughs> Atmosphere is different. Did we go over? Well, that's right, we did. Yeah. One and two to Kelly as the Yanks trying to add on to their four to nothing lead here in the top of the fourth inning. Well, he kept his hands back well on that pitch. A good pitch from Ritz and just fouled it off to stay alive. It's a product of Eatontown, New Jersey, 26 years old. Oh, down by the shore, yep. huh? Graduated from Davis County, Iowa High School. Went to junior college in Iowa. Strike three, got it, no foul off. No, Al Clark has his hand in the air and now calls him out. That no, no foul ball, kept that hand up in the air. Yanks are gone here in the top of the fourth. They lead the Tigers four to nothing. Today's baseball is brought to you in part by Ed Twiggins Private Stock. A paint so good you won't be disappointed. Oh, CBU Huckleberry, my fa my favorite pencil. He broke he broke it in half. Tony Phillips leads it off for the Tigers here in the bottom of the fourth. I just want a little souvenir. I'm going to put this in my pocket because somewhere along the line this year, you're going to ask me if I got an extra pencil. And I'm going to pull the other half of that out of my pocket and give it to you. Take it home. I'm going to sharpen it. What country club is this from? On that outside corner, a pitch and a beauty. And it's a ball and a strike to Tony Phillips. He walked his first time up. He's still 0 for 9 on the season. Melito Perez has given the Tigers just one base hit. That is a major league pop-up. Noakes and puts it away. One gone. Well, he does an excellent job on it. A little trivia question here, Saber. In 1991, Cecil Fielder became only the third player in Major League history to lead both leagues in home runs and RBIs in consecutive seasons. Can you name the other two? That's a tricky question, you know. They'll bring up Mark Carrion, the Tiger right fielder who went down on strikes his first time up. Henry Aaron's going to be here on Sunday. Yanks, of course, back here tomorrow afternoon and Sunday. Aaron will be here to give Cecil Fielder the Henry Aaron Award. It's the RBI, Henry Aaron oh. RBI Award, and he gives it to each uh, player in each league that leads the league in RBIs. Is it true? I Henry that... Aaron, one of my heroes, and I was growing up. Interrupt right, but right in the middle of his uh, question, Steve has jumped right in on What was the question? The question is Hank Aaron hitting all those home runs never hit 50 home runs in a year? No, as high as 44. No kidding. Well, that sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? That was a guess. He was that was a guest, too, by the way, 44. <laughs> that was a number on his back, I know. I know. <laughs> I think it was 44. Good pitch by Perez. And the count evens out at two and two. The Tigers looking for their first victory. They lost three in a row to the 
Toronto Blue Jays. And the Yanks, of course, trying to go 3 0. Right three got him. There's that slider and a beauty. Second time he's got carry on. And strikeout number three for Perez. Oh, fastball. Oh, oh yeah. I thought it was a slider. It was at such good location. You know, it looked like it hopped. He's got yeah. quite a few strikes on some pop on that. Yep. Talking to Bobby about that before, here's a kid that has a good fastball. I think somewhere along the line lost his confidence in it. It's a dangerous. Well, boy, it's a night. It's fun. No, the, I first I thought it was because of the cold weather. I said, don't throw any curves, throw all fastballs. Uh, Travis Fryman with two outs. Check swing now. Oh, he did swing. Check it first with Larry Barnett and bring it up. Yes, he did. Notes coming out, reminding everybody two outs. Nick against the extra base hit in the outfield. All very deep in left. Kelly deep in center. There's the old 55 footer right there, Steven. Yeah. That's why you were never a catcher, huh? You left it up to Yogi. <laughs> Tools of ignorance. They, I mean, that was it. They called him way back. Joe Carter missed the game yesterday. That's right. Yep. His, his consecutive game streak. Yep. And when you think of it, 500 507. Seven and Breaking ball got him. Tigers gone one, two, three here in the bottom of the fourth inning. A couple of strikeouts for Melito Perez. We go to the fifth. It'll be Hall, Tartable, and Noakes for the Yanks. They lead it four to nothing. Top of the fifth here at Tiger Stadium, four to nothing, New York. And we'll take a look at some of the scores on our wheel scoreboard as we go along. It'll be Hall, Tartable, and Oaks here for the Yanks as they lead it four to nothing. Buck Showalter, youngest manager in baseball, trying to make his club three wins and no losses. The interesting thing, Scooter, about this year in Major League in the American League, excuse me, especially breaking ball fouled off, and it's 0-2. The number of managers in the American League with less than a year's experience with their ball club this year. That's right. There are quite a few. Think about that. As our little uh -huh. Seaver Rizzuto trivia quiz here, how many can you come up with? All right. Well, let's see. Got the Red Sox and the Yankees for two. Yep, that's two. This is all managers that were hired over the winter or ha are hired during the course of the season in 1991. Let's see, Seattle. There's one. Cleveland. Bill, Bill Plummer, Cleveland. Mike Hargrove was yep. another one. That's right. Let's see, so many teams in the American League that I. Baltimore, Johnny Oates. Johnny Oates. Butch Hobson in Boston, Mike Hargrove in Cleveland. We named those two. Right. Phil Garner in Milwaukee. Oh, yeah, this is. Buck Showalter, of course, with the Yanks. Buck Rogers. They'll check it third. Yes, Dale Forge. Yes, he did go. Oh, a strikeout for Ritz here, and Mel Hall can't believe it. I don't believe it either. I mean, he went halfway, but I thought he stopped the back. Take a look at it again. No, he stopped it. And no way he swung at that. Look at that. Well, that man right there disagrees. Yeah. And you're out too, Scooter. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Danny Tartable, who is 0 for 1. He walked and bounced into a fielder's choice. Oh, yeah, I tell you that Mel Hall is red hot too. That homer he hit deep, That's right a center. Shot that he hit wow. out of here too. And a single through the pitcher's legs. Getting back to the manager scooter. Oh yeah, the American Sorry, League, California, Buck Rogers, and who was signed in August of '91 uh -huh. to manage the Angels. Of course, he managed for many years with Montreal. Has a hanging slider over everybody's head, and it's. Three balls and no strikes to Tartable. See Kansas City McRae last year. Last Absolutely, year, you're yeah. right. 
Chicago White Sox. Oh, yes. Gene yes, Lamont, yes, new manager yeah. with that ball club. Wow, oh, I tell you. Bill Plummer in Seattle, you talked about. Yeah. And the leftovers, if you will, the holdovers. Carnival taken all the way, and it's three and one. Bobby Valentine in Texas. Tony La Russa, of course, in Oakland, right there in 86. Tom Kelly. Minnesota, right? Fouled off, and that count goes full three and That's two. That's it, just those three? And the oh, other yeah. guy on the other side of the ballpark here tonight, opposite Buck oh, Joe yes. Walter. Sparky Anderson. He's got to be the dean. Since 1979, absolutely. He's been here with the Tigers after many successful years with the Cincinnati Reds. Right on the corner. And Tartable knew it. Two strikeouts. Now three strikeouts in a row for Ritz. That one on the black. Not many people are going to hit this one, Scooter. No, no, no. Nope. Well, four strikeouts now for Ritz. He in relief of Eric King. He came in with two outs in the third inning. Runners on first and third and got Charlie Hayes to pop up. Gave up a double to Mattingly in the fourth. A little ball that was not hit well to center field that Tyler could not catch up to. And a couple of strikeouts. It'll be Matt Noakes who is two for two tonight. There's a breaking ball. He's high and away, and it's 2-0. and oh. Noakes had a decent, decent spring, hit 283 during spring training. Popped him up, and he'll be back over the top of our heads. Now the Yanks in spring training were 17 and 14. They had a pretty good spring. Detroit was... Right at 500 ball, they were 15 and 15. Best record of spring training, the Cincinnati Reds were 22 and 9. See, see Lou got kicked out. The old, oh, another base. Base hit for Noakes. He's three for three on the night. Oh, he hung that one right up there. High he breaking pitch didn't break much. So Noakes with three singles. And he yanks the base runner with two outs. I think he likes hitting in this ballpark. Yeah. He couldn't believe the Tigers getting rid of him. He had a, that great year. What he hit about plus to 30 home runs. Heading back to spring training, the Phillies had the worst record of spring training. Nine and 19. And a couple of surprises. I was looking at this today. Yeah. I was in my hotel room. Montreal Expos were 20 and 12 in spring training. Ooh, and they're, they're Very not, good. They're not doing too badly at this time. They, they shut out the shut Mets. Shut out the Mets today. That's exactly right. Yeah, on the Mets opening day. Good and gave up only. Oh, oh boy, is oh. that a rocket? He has hit two rockets. Boy, if Ryman doesn't get his glove on that ball, that's going to be down in the corner, and Noakes would have had a chance to score. Yep. So uh, two outs. All of a sudden, two singles for the Yankees and a rally here in the top of the fifth inning. Runners in first and second and two outs. Second hit of the day for Jesse Barfield. Boy, and he has hit that ball right on the button yep. the last two times he's been to the plate. That's the way he was hitting him this spring. He had a great spring. Those were his first hits of this year. Charlie Hayes, who is one for two. He's had an RBI single in the second inning. And a ball that he drove right between the legs of starter Eric King for the Tigers. And Danny Tartable raced home with a Yankees second run. They leave two after four and a half here in Detroit. It's the Yankees four, the Tigers nothing. 
baseball is this baseball is brought to you in part by new advanced formula mobile one all right scooter going to the bottom of the fifth inning and Melito Perez in a very impressive outing so far talked about it the other night about how the Yankees have got to have a number one star yeah. to really step up there and give them 250 275 innings. Tyler pulls it inside the bag at first. You see the way Mattingly was Boy, playing? Mattingly was way over there and I can't believe that. I mean, well, he may have been crossed up in the sense of the pitch. In a clubhouse meeting they said we're going to play this pitch this guy away and play him away. And that ball on the inside part of the plate, and they've got the defense set up for a certain way to pitch yeah, against I an individual. That. I don't particularly like it. I don't, I don't like big holes in the uh, infield. Uh, that was too big. He was yeah. not only playing way I over, agree. but way in. Nonetheless, the second base hit for the Tigers. And it'll bring up Dan Glad, the only other base hit. A Cecil Fielder single in the third inning. Gladden is over two. Start of the night at 231 has dropped to 200. Boy, your average can jump around the first couple of weeks of the season. Good night or a bad night. Talking about Joe Carter missing that game the other day, yeah. 507. He wasn't really close to Cal Ripken. No. Ripken at 1,576. He played today, so it's 577 if he was in the game today up in Toronto. Off the end of the bat. Not hit hard. But enough to get it by Randy Velarde, and the Tigers are on the board, 4-1. to one. An RBI single for Dan Gladden. Another big hole in the infield to me, Scooter. Yeah. I guess that meeting they uh, worked during the first four innings, but this inning they're crossing up the defense. They'll bring up Lou Whitaker. Another base hit. And there's no defense against that one. Nope. Inside out. Little line drive to left field. So three base hits in a row for the Tigers here in the bottom of the fifth. A double by Kyler and back to back singles by Gladden and Whitaker. They're going to start throwing a little off speed pitch on that first and pitch they're serving up there. Coming down the middle of the lineup, too, and yeah. Alan Trammell, the hitter, and Cecil Fielder in the on deck circle. Oh. Fielder has been up with men on base the first two times that he has been to the plate. This guy can bunt too. They better. Tra Trammell 0 for 1. He walked in the third inning. Perez has walked four Tigers here tonight and has four strikeouts. strike. Dick Trzuski down the third. The third base coach flashing signs to Gladden who's the base runner at second. And Whitaker at first. Up and away ball two. Gladden's going to 
score. Kelly loses the ball momentarily, but no advance by the base runners. No harm, no foul, but it's four to two, New York. The Tigers have cut the Yankee lead in half. Four consecutive base hits for the Tigers here in the fifth. Oh, there's got to be some stirring around in the bullpen pretty soon. Here comes Mark Carter out of the Yankee dugout. Kelly bobbled that ball, but Whitaker had already stopped and started back to second. If he had kept going just a little bit, he'd have made it easier. Well, while Mark Connor's out there trying to settle Melito down, here's the answer to the trivia question. Remember in 1991, Cecil Fielder became only the third player in Major League history to lead in both leagues in home runs and RBIs in consecutive seasons. Can you name the other two? Well, we should know. Babe Ruth in 1920 and 21, and Jimmy Fox in 32 and 33. But that's double X. You're a little young, John Moore. Oh boy, Seaver noticed that right away. Les Lancaster saw to get loose for the Tigers down in their bullpen. And John Havian getting loose for the Yanks. How many times do you dodge a bullet? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, he got away with one hand. Cecil Fielder in the first inning he came up with Whitaker on base and bounced a shortstop. And then again in the third inning, and Tramo was on base. And single to left field. Pitch by Perez right there. Got to pitch him inside. You got it. You really Any do. Any big hitter, oh. you got to pitch him inside. Don't let him extend those arms. He's had a couple of good swings tonight. Fielder, four hits on the season. Three of them have been home runs. Ooh, what a quick little slide of that one. Oh, speed pitching a beauty, yeah. too. Totally fooled him. Back to back fantastic years. Very, very upset in that article in the New York Times with a picture on it. He wasn't picked for MVP one of those two years. Oh, he hung that one. He was lucky to get away with that. Feeler of the last two years has hit 95 home runs and driven in 165 runs. Yeah. 265 runs. She's just 200. I was only oh. off by 100. <laughs> and I agreed, too. That's 265 runs. Excuse me. Two balls and two strikes. Nito might have wanted that one. A couple of runs in for the Tigers here in the bottom of the fifth. Two men on, nobody out. Whitaker at second, Trammell at first. And Melito Perez in a pile of trouble here. Could be two. Velarde, Kelly, and they doubled up. Boy, talk about the pitcher's friend and when you need it. Yep. That's a 6-4-3, and that a big couple of outs right there, especially when you consider that Fielder has been up with four men on base so far in this ball game. It'll bring on Mickey Tettleton. Tettleton is 0 for 1. He was robbed by Don Mattingly in the third inning. And it's a four to three ball game. So wait and see, is that a pass ball or a wild pitch? Well, a 
four to three ball game now. Three runs in the inning for the Detroit Tigers. I think that was a pass ball, Tom. I would think so. Hit his glove. Yeah, he just said pass ball. Yep. Was not in the dirt. The base is now empty. But three runs in here for Detroit. Yankees youth baseball camp. This led former Yankees Joe Pepitone, Mike Torres, Hector Lopez, and Phil Linz help your child improve their hitting, pitching, and fielding skills. For more information and a free brochure, call the Yankees youth baseball camp at 1 800 666 1002. That's 1 800 666 1002. I heard that harmonica in the background there. That was a riot. That was Rizzuto. No. I mean, that was Mercer. That playing was... a harmonic in Rizzuto's ear. No, but that was one of the few times I was on a bus with the rest of the team. <laughs> Normally, they wouldn't let me on. And Yogi really blew his stack. Pat Kelly leads it off for the Yanks here in the top of the sixth inning. With Kelly, Velarde, and Matty Lee. You know, Steve, last night I happened to mention uh, about Steve Palermo. I'm wondering yes. how he was. And I got this phone call from John Dunn, who uh, has a lot to do with uh, what's our tremendous, the Bronx Zoo, and whose brother was, rather his father, was a police officer outside the Yankee Stadium. Anyway, <laughs> I know I tell terrible stories that take too long. But anyway, he says, in regards to Steve Palermo, we're going to honor him at Yankee Stadium on April 14th. There will be a write-up in the New York Times in connection with the award. Well, there is a courageous fight right oh. there by a courageous man. And he has vowed that he will be back on yeah. in the major leagues. Oh, he is working And they said when he first was hurt and shot in that accident, what you call it, it's not an accident. Yeah. He was trying to help somebody down in Texas and they said he would never walk again one of the best umpires in all of baseball he's gone through a tremendous rehab well, there's got to be something wrong on April of 14th the Yankees will be in Toronto I'll have to call Mr. Dunn who usually is very efficient with his dates John Moore the old eagle eye came up with that one He loves to prove me wrong. All three of them do. Forget it. I'm not coming up with anything. <laughs> Just the facts. Full count on Pat Kelly. You sure about this? And he gets the base on balls. Les Lancaster, the new pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. Speaking of Lancaster, Dolly Kaminsky is having a birthday. Happy birthday. She's a... <laughs> <laughs> what kind of segue was I, that? I don't know. It was ter terrible, but <laughs> speaking of Lank, I'm going to see if this kid was born in Lancaster, <laughs> California. Randy Velarde, we'll see if Buck Showalter does something here. Oh, Velarde is over three. Cecil Fielder robbed him of a base hit in the second inning. Buck Showalter. Passing the signs down to Cleet Boyer, who's passing them back to Randy Velarde. Joe Walter has shown that he will play an aggressive brand of baseball. Good speed. Kelly at first. Big hole between Fielder and Lou Whitaker at second base. The Pirates, excuse me, not the Pirates, the Tigers cut the Yankees lead down to one as they score three runs in the bottom of the fifth inning. Real quick move that kid's got.
Pitching out. Let's see if something on. Sparky putting the pitch out on. On a strike and no balls. Lancaster. Made his second appearance for the Tigers last Wednesday. Pitched an inning. Gave up a couple hits in a run. He was signed by the Tigers on April 3rd. And he was released by the Cubs. There goes Kelly. Hit and run's going to work. And they get the runner to second. Oh, they got a guy shot at him. Yeah, they get him. Kelly way around second base. And a heads up play by Cecil Fielder. And Lou Whitaker. And a rookie mistake right there. Boy, that was a mistake. Once you make up your mind, you got to go. But Boy, Fielder really got rid of that ball in a hurry. But he anticipate that. Cecil Fielder, you see him come yeah. off that baggie. That's exactly right. So the Yanks with a golden opportunity, a leadoff walk to Pat Kelly, and all of a sudden, two outs and nobody on. Yankee first baseman, a double his last time up. It is one for three tonight. This should get Mattingly started on his home run swing for the year right here in this park. I haven't really seen him sting the ball yet. No, the scooter. not to right field either. Hit one ball foul the other night at Yankee Stadium hit it hard. Field don't understand it. No. Why with two outs, three and oh. Green light. In this ballpark. Yeah. Two outs, nobody on. Mattingly, a base on balls with two outs. We have something in Yankee history is Seaver. Toyota presents on this date in Yankee history. April 10th, 1962, the Yankees defeat Baltimore 7 6 on opening day at the stadium. Ralph Terry gets the win and relief of Whitey Ford. Mickey Mantle hits his 375th career home run. It'll bring up Roberto Kelly with two outs and Mattingly on first. Well, it was not really very historic. I mean, Excuse me? Were you talking to me? No. No, I was talking to Moy. He handed oh. me this thing. A date in history. Only 375 home runs. Slider on the outside corner. And quickly, 0-2 to, to Kelly. Kelly off to a good start. He is one for three here tonight. He had a good spring. Hit about 340 in spring training. by Tettleman behind the plate. by John Deere Lawn Care Dealers. Stop by your local dealer to see why nothing runs like a deer. Oh, I like, you know who'd look good on top of one of those uh, tractors? <clears throat> Tom Seaver. Yes, sir. The, the land baron up in Connecticut. He's got a lot tractors of- Tractors or riding lawnmower? Or riding lawnmower. Very good. Better. With a large 18 horsepower engine? Uh, oh, yes. Little extra wide seat for uh, <laughs> the big rump. Now we're not, we're not the only one with the wide seat. No, now. I know it. 
slid a little bit too hard in your day you going to second base a couple of times, flattened it out, you know? No, but I know you do a lot of work. You've got a truck and you work on your... On oh, sure. You got that... Uh, what is it, a lawn... Lawn tractor? No, what is it? Riding lawnmower? Riding lawnmower. Would help you stay away from getting Lyme disease. Yes, it again. would, wouldn't it? It certainly yes, would. It would. Even the, the chew all those ticks up, wouldn't yep. it? Yep. <laughs> Tony Phillips, Mark Carrion, and Travis Ryman for the Tigers here in the bottom of the sixth inning as they throw the Yanks by a run. They touch Melito Perez up for a three spot in the fifth inning. On four consecutive base hits. We have big out. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. And Perez got Cecil Fielder to bounce into a double play. They could have had a huge inning. Middle of the lineup up. Nobody out. A couple of men on. Three and one to Phillips. And he loses it. A leadoff walk for the Tigers here in the sixth. Well, the fans speak out. Remind the fans, each month we will pose a question dealing with a topical baseball subject and allow you to respond. This month's question, should the DH be eliminated from Major League Baseball? No! Send your response to the Fans Speak Out, WPIX-TV, 220 East 42nd Street, New York, New York, 10017. Results will be posted at the end of April, and the best arguments will be read on the air. John, excuse me, Scooter. I was going to say, Faye Vincent wants to do away with the DH. White wants to do away with the DH. On the outside corner, John yeah, Havian getting loose for the Yanks. If they do away with the DH, they're going to do away with a lot of old timers just hanging by a thread for the because of the DH. twice and struck out both times. Right through that one. And it's on two. of course came over last year two years ago excuse me from Oakland Had a good year last year for the Tigers not really a base stealing threat he'll try it once in a while had 10 last year you know he's been 19 the year before excuse me Frederick but he's been talking a lot about wanting to play down in Miami with the uh, new National League team that's going to be there next year Already. Uh, we'll be oh, well, 
Yeah, you don't know whether he'd be putting on the hit and run with the guy that uh -huh. hasn't made a whole lot of contact here tonight. You might start your runner if it's three and two. Oops, does not go. Right for it again. And carry on is three for three, three strikeouts. That was a weak swing right there. Strikeout number five for Alito Perez. He even tried to cut his swing down on that. No, he didn't. Make contact, you know? No. They'll bring up Travis Fryman. So a leadoff walk to Tony Phillips by Perez, but he comes back to strike out carry on. On the 2-2 fastball up and out over the plate. There's a slider of beauty. Just 22 years old. Born in Lexington, Kentucky. Popped him up. Let's say a play for Manning Lee. Yep, looks like it. And there are two gone. in the Yankee bullpen, although he's kind of stopped throwing. The leadoff walk given up by Perez, and he started to get loose rather quickly down there. But Perez has come back to strike carry on out. And get Ryman to pop out. The Yanks lead at 4-3. to three. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning here in Detroit. Phillip still does not go. I don't think he'd go here. I don't think they want to open that, close that hole. No. Lou Whitaker, or excuse me, for Kyler. They got they have players on this club that look like they, you know, they, they do. In their manner is built, built. Ky Kyler and Tram and, uh, and Whitaker, Whitaker yeah. and Travis Fryman and Trammell. Uh huh. They're almost like mirror images of each other. Two pretty good guys that pattern yourself that Not too, too bad. Right. Yep. That's got to be a record, I would think, that as long as Whitaker and Trammell have been together in the big leagues. 15 years since 1978. It is a record. Uh, dandy little director said it's a record. You can't slip in anybody. Huh? No, it's John Moore. It's Plus, he's planning a wedding here. Oh, he's got no way. He's got a lot of time. He's not directing today. Two balls that no strikes to Kyler. I was going to ask him what he's doing up there. Scooter, he's still the boss. I know he is. That's up and away, ball three. That was one deep and close. And Dan Platt in the on deck circle. This could be the last pitch for Alito. Alito has walked five tonight and struck out five. It's cold here. It's got to be in the 30s. When the game started, it was 41 degrees. My favorite number, Scooter. Oh. <laughs> Ball four. And runners at first and second with two outs. Walk number six by Melito Perez. And Buck Showalter is sitting up. He's already motioned for the bullpen. John Avian is loose. Early in the season, your pitchers, especially young pitchers, will be on a pitch count. Yes. That might have something to do with it. Six base on balls, that will have something yeah, to do yeah. with it. And also, you don't want to get a young pitcher into the situation where he might lose it. He's still no. got a chance to win this one here. Right. And and the, the cold weather, too. Yeah, absolutely. To well, a pitching change here in Detroit. And while Buck Wall, Joe Walter changes his pitchers, we'll take time out along the Yankee baseball net. He had lived that, you know. These are my new shoes from Converse. They're so... Perez. And Perez is 
Perez leaves on the top side of a four to three ball game. A couple outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. John Habian pitched in Tuesday's ball game against the Red Sox. Boy, he had some spring on the yeah. mm -hmm. He allowed just one run all spring training. He did not allow a run over his last 11 innings. Popped him up. Milhawk should get there in one pitch and he's out of it. Maybe it does it again. The Tigers leave a couple of runners after six here at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. It's the Yankees four and the Tigers three. Game recap is brought to you by Budweiser. Mel Hall had a solo home run at the top of the second inning and then another single to drive in another run. Jesse Barfield had an RBI, RBI double in the third. Melito Perez had five strikeouts, but he had came up with six walks and was a little bit of trouble in one inning. And he did all that in five and two third innings. So the Yankees are leading four to three. Bobby Mercer has rejoined us. And here's Mel Hall. Takes the ball. Tough to get loose tonight, Mercer. It's tough to get loose. You bet. You hear anything about the Masters? No, I didn't hear. No. Oh, back know. upstairs. Down there, they tore that course apart yesterday. Oh yes, they, the, the, the players said if you're going to shoot a low score, yesterday was, was the day that they yeah. did it. Top of the seventh, four-three Yankees leading. Bell is going up there swinging this time. Last yeah. time he got called out on strikes. He didn't think that he went around. But first base yeah. umpire Ford said yes, he did. And on a night like this, the umpires, if they're standing out there very long, if it's close, they're going to be raising their it. right I mean, hand. You better be swinging. You're right. All right, Les Lancaster, the third Tiger pitcher of the night. So and much he, for that. Yeah. <laughs> He's not too cold to play on by. Two and two on Hall. Oh, did he got that? And almost pinned him to the wall. Boy, he went down and got it really hit a bullet. One man out. In a tremendous home run back in the second inning out of the right center field. Plenty of extension on that. The ball was down and in, and yeah, he turned on it. He really did. <laughs> Mr. Hurd is talking about the Masters because he really had a good golf swing. At that. <laughs> Break one. Danny Chartable. Danny has walked, bounced to second, and struck out. I heard you talking earlier about being on the bus a uh, long time ago. You yeah. Finally, I, I finally rode a bus today. Did you? First time in two years. I, the, I tell you team? what, it, it's different. Yes, yeah. it really is. Twelve guys had a telephone on the bus. No. Twelve guys had a telephone, their own telephone on the bus, and I got to look here. I couldn't believe it. You know, and I got to looking around. Three guys had a fax machine. Oh, and they were buying and trading stock. I mean, it was the darndest thing. It was like, the, it was like being on the exchange. It was the darndest thing I have ever seen about. Yeah, oh, yeah. In the old days, remember, Tiant, Catfish, Hunter, all those guys that'd be telling jokes and getting on each oh, other. Oh, sure. That was the, the fun of riding the bus was yeah. being able to be with your teammates and talk about, uh, well, <laughs> nice swing you had tonight, big guy. <laughs> Yeah, if you'd have caught the ball, we'd have won the ball game. Thanks a lot for losing it for us. Stuff like that. Three and two now. How do you like that? Well, it's a new breed, a new wave. I'm not saying that's bad because no, no, I, no, no. I, 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 I made five thousand. I bought, uh, I bought ten thousand <laughs> shares of one stock and sold it. I bought it right when we got on the bus at the Ritz and then sold it before we got here. Good story, Mercer. I like it. 
Still three and two on top of a one out in the top of the seven. The Yankees leading four to three. supposed to wish happy birthday to Joe Grippo youngster out in Long Island and I butchered him belated happy birthday Joe well tomorrow April the 11th at 115 Yankees at Detroit on MSG and also on Sunday April the 12th at 130 Yankees at Detroit on MSG and then Monday the Yankees will be I know that's Matt Noakes, so this is an important bat. It is, but he missed the buzz. He missed it. Go ahead. Finish. Are the Yankees here in Detroit? I thought they were in Mont. And no, uh, they're Toronto. in Toronto. Yeah, I thought they were in Toronto. It says uh, uh, Monday, April 13th, but they're in Toronto, April the 13th. That game also will be on MSG, but we'll be back on the air on Tuesday, right, in Toronto at 7:30. Right. Oh, that got settles in. Now that's the long-range forecast, of, uh, okay. you know, telecast. I mean, and forecast too. <laughs> you can forecast the weather because we'll be in the dome. So They're talking about some kind of a real cold front coming. I don't know how much colder it could get. You know, here? Yeah, coming in uh, on Sunday afternoon, as a matter of fact. Well, we won't be here. That's no, but we'll be in Toronto. You know, on Tuesday, if it uh, hangs around, <laughs> and we won't have to Would worry be about inside? it because the sky doesn't. You're right. The flying up there, you know, it'd be cold flying That's up. That's right. There. Right. One ball, two strikes. Well, this is, I think, typical on a night like this. The pitchers, they've had problems finding the strike zone and uh, being a cold night. Tom and I talked about it earlier in the telecast. It's hard to really get a good feel, That's a good right. grip of the ball. Pause 10 seconds along the Yankee Baseball Network for station identification. Well, Matt Noakes, who is three for three, hit two balls well and one off the end of the bat. Probably the only time you'll ever see Matt Noakes beat out an infield hit. Dribbler down the third base line. Low two and two. Uh, two of the sports I can think of uh, immediately is golf and baseball. You play those two games by the field yeah, in your yeah, hand. Absolutely. Carrion's going to make the catch. Yeah, he got no, excuse me, Scooter. He got yeah. Noakes just in front of bed. He yeah. was out on his front foot. He hit it on the end of the bat. He was mad at himself. Yeah, he if he had waited just another one tenth of a second on yep. that ball, he would have hit it out of the ballpark. The reason, the reason they call it a game of inches, it's a game of inches on hitting. Eric King mixed a couple of balls that went through his right. legs. Yeah. It cost him uh, two runs. Two runs. Yep. If he'd have gotten down. Uh, a little bit sooner, another inch or two, he'd have saved probably a couple more runs and they would have been ahead. Ooh, all of a sudden, the flags are really whipping, Mercer. Look at them. The, uh, They've been forecasting some uh, heavy thunder showers right. in here later yeah. on this evening. They may begin to move Whoa. in. Wow, it really did pick up. Barfield has picked up two. He's hit two shots tonight. A double and a single. One RBI. Well, a guy that can handle all the trade talk is Jesse Barfield. I mean, he's a class act all the way, on or off the field. There's been a lot of talk about Jesse leaving the Yankees. But I'll tell you what, he comes to play all the time. Yep. And he plays hard and he plays well. He's got the stroke. I mean, and then he's a complete ball player. the 
end of six and a half. It's the Yankees four and the Tigers three. Sika is up there. He is one for two for the night. And the count is even at one and one. Walk, struck out, single, and scored a run. Tough part of the order coming up now, Scooter, with Whitaker and Trammell and uh, Cecil, uh, Cecil Fielder. Yeah. They've got to get Whitaker out of there, not put him on, because Trammell can do a lot with the bat. Fielder can hit him nine miles. The Tiger Ball Club, they can look so bad for eight innings, and man, they can put a lot of runs on the board in one inning. Yes, they can. One at bat, anyway. Got that potential. Looks we got a bat to knock in two or three or four runs. Remember the years he had a couple of years where he hit a lot of home yeah. runs. When he first came up, he didn't hit the power. Trammel the same way. They were line drive hitters. Behavior now. Hit 190 home runs career oh. here at uh, Tiger Stadium. Hit 23 last year. His best year with the Tigers was uh, 28 home runs back in 1989. When he first started, he didn't hit one, right? No, he started back in uh, uh, 1978. Was his first full year. Hit three home runs. Uh huh. And, and never really started hitting home runs until uh, he hit 15 back in 1982. And then all of a sudden, I guess he got stronger. And by three and two, there's that wind getting old glory straight out there. Oh, he lost him way outside. Way outside. Well, tickets for all Yankee home games are on sale at the stadium advanced ticket window open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5, and Sunday, 10 to 5. You can also get tickets at the Yankee Clubhouse store and at all Ticketmaster outlets, including all Soundorama stores. Get your tickets. The Yankees are coming in 1992. I Trammell. Now this, he can really handle that bat. The Yankees leading by just one run. Good hit and run man, good bunter. Something that you don't see very often from John Habian is the fact that he uh, falls behind a hitter and walks yeah, him. Yeah, that's right. Habian always, always around the plate with the ball. There goes Whitaker. He had a good jump in there. He was going to hit and run down the right field line. Great for the Yankees there. He had the pitch he could handle, Bobby. Down Nothing there. new for these two guys. No. I mean, they've been working on this for years and years and years. Did you, did you see Whitaker? I mean, excuse me. Did you see Trammell the way he, he tucked his right yes, and back yes. foot back to try to hit the ball to the opposite field? It was great to watch. That was really watch, watch this. Watch this back foot. Yeah, look yeah. at that. Slid it back and sliced it just a little late. You don't even have to give these two guys signs. They know when they yeah. need to get and run or bunt or whatever. They're playing together for so long, and and they've got a lot of savvy around the baseball diamond. Let's see if he bunts now. They gave him one chance to hit and run. Hamill hitting 250 for this young season. Quick move, but Whitaker gets back. is about as close as you can come without getting hit. That yep. ball just kept riding in and in on Trammell. Now, if it was the old crow, Frank Crescetti, with the way he'd blouse that shirt out, he'd have got just ticked on it. Or how about Hunt? Oh, Hunt. Oh. He'd <laughs> he have been hit for sure, yep. right? Yep. 
Well, one thing for sure, too, is the fact that it looks like Alan Trammell's back's all right because you can't yeah. back out of the way like he quick. did without, without a good, healthy back. One on one to count. Again. Well, the cold weather could be having an effect, like Bobby said. You're gripping that ball. You don't get that good feel. will come in just to try to break up the momentum. Keep blowing on that hand a little long as the umpires let you do it when it's cold. Well, all the pitchers have had problems finding the strike zone. Yeah. They've been wild. They've, they've had an inning or two where they've been around the plate. Oh, man. I mean, this is very unusual. Three balls, one strike. Walk Whitaker. gave up 20 walks on 90 innings pitch. And this it could be a double play. Nope. He got him. Good play by Kelly keeping his foot on the bag. A lot of gives him a good throw. They had a shot for the double play. A little big out. A little slow roller and Velarde could not get enough on the ball. To get it to Kelly in time to make yeah. the double play. But you got to make sure of the one, obviously, that's Absolutely. what the Yankees did. Mattingly gave Habian some, uh, looked like a little packet of rosin to keep in his back pocket. Well, he also wanted to tell Habian, hey, you know, you got to keep an eye on uh, travel. I mean, right, he's very right, sticky right. over there. He's got deceptive speed. For the Yankees. Matt, oh! I tell you, Noakes is unbelievable. He's great on those. Uh, yeah, but, but either Mattingly or Charlie Hayes should, should have called taken. Noakes off of that yep. play right there. It was either Mattingly's play or Hayes's play. Yep. And Hayes uh, should have called Noakes uh, all, uh, off all the way on that play. It's much easier for him to come in and make that catch than it is for Matt Noakes to make it. I mean, a major league fly ball by Cecil Fielder. And it's up in the wind. It's swirling and yep. whipping around here. You can see how difficult it is for Matt Noakes just to pick it up. Sure, and he started way in foul territory. He ended up one-third of the way down the third baseline. By two out now, and Tettle in the batter. Again, they'll have to watch Trammell. Ooh. Great one. will probably give Mickey Tettleton at least two strikes. And I don't even know if Trammell is healthy enough to try to steal uh -huh. a man. Uh, you gotta be a you gotta be careful with him because he may even try the delayed steal with the left-handed batter up there. That'd probably be his best bet. Strike two. Tettleton with one swing of the bat obviously could make it uh, a lead for the Detroit Tigers. Yeah. But now with two strikes, you may want to try to take a chance. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Very few players use that double steal for some reason or another. That's an easy way to steal a base. You mean the delayed, I mean, delayed steal? Yeah. Yes. I know you used to do it. You did it very well. One ball, two strikes on Tettleton. Two out here in the bottom of the seventh. Yankees leading four to three. Mattingly holding the bag. Oh, he was gone. Got him. He, he was definitely going to go on that one. You can see him leaning and just did get back. I mean, if you were going to run on the delayed steal, uh, you, you do. I would. I would have done it with, with one strike because uh -huh. you do it with the element of surprise. That's that's how you do it. And you actually steal on the the infielder. Yeah, they turn now automatically. See, they put right. their head down and turn back. Randy Velarde, look how deep he's playing. Yeah. At shortstop. And you can beat him to the bag. Of course, Kelly is not even in the play right now. And you can get a pretty good jump on the, on the delayed steal. There goes Trammell. Struck him out. Oh, boy. What a big inning that was. What a comeback for Habian. So at the end of seven full innings, it's the Yankees four and the Tigers three.
Well, while we have some time, let's take a look at the Wiz scoreboard in the American League Toronto. Now, they're perfect this year. They come up with a couple of runs at the bottom of the ninth inning to beat Baltimore 4-3. Minnesota is leading Texas 3-1 to one at the end of five and a half. They're playing in Minnesota. <laughs> I tell you, the yeah. Minnesota Twins, they come up with quality players they every do. year. Yep. If they lose something that's like a Jack Morris and they <laughs> somehow come up with a trade for a John Stockley, <laughs> you got to watch out for Minnesota. They've got to be a favorite over there in the Western Division. In the American League, oh, excuse me, in the National League, Montreal 4 nothing as they shut out the Mets opening day at Shea Stadium this afternoon. St. Louis 2-1 over Chicago in extra innings. The game went 11 at Wrigley. Charlie Hayes, the batter. Pittsburgh leading. Philadelphia 3 2, the bottom of the ninth with Philadelphia batting. And in the hole, that'll be a base hit. I, oh, yes. Now, if that ball didn't hit Hayes in the, in the foot, it would have gone in and he'd been able to get the second base. It's a base hit, though, for Charlie Hayes. For a 250 pounder at first base, I'll tell you what, Cecil Fielder, he's got some moves over he there. He does. I didn't think that Travel had a prayer even coming close to throwing either. out Charlie Hayes, and they almost get him right there. I mean, he tagged him. Well, and he just couldn't hold, couldn't hold on to the ball. ball. Oh. It was one of those slap tags. Yeah. All right, a base hit for Hayes. And now the batter, Pat Kelly. And the Yankees got to do a little either hit and run or bunting here. He needs some insurance. Oh, he did that before with a runner on third and one out. Popped it up. Oh, that wind is. We told you about the flags blowing, and you saw what happened on the last two pop ups. One man out. Now Randy Velarde. Randy has gone for the collar tonight, 0 for 4. Top of the eighth. And, oh, he bobbled it. Safe, everybody's safe. That's very unusual for Trammell, who is so sure-handed. See what they give him on up. I think that's got to be an error. Don't you? It should be, but on a night like this. He hits the ball hard, but Allen is right there, and he just couldn't come up with it. It ran right up his uh, arm. They gave him you're an right, error. Right? Yeah. You're right, Mercer, as usual. Runners at first and second, one man out. Mattingly. He is one for three on the night. Strike one. I'll tell you, for a guy who was released by the Chicago he throws pretty good. Really? I was talking to uh, Sparky before today's ball game. He said, you're going to be surprised. Lancaster, he's got some nasty stuff. He's got, it looks like he's got one of those, those heavy fastballs and a nice slider. Ooh. I think he's taking two good strikes. Munoz loosening up in the bullpen. Nothing in two on Don. Body at first, Hayes down at second. And that's got to be two. And Taylor Man did a play right there. Oh, nothing across, and at the end of seven and a half, Yankees four, Tigers three. We're going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Uh, Tony Phillips to bat. 
Strike one. Tony's still looking for his first hit here in 1992. Oh, yeah, he's been on twice in two walks here. You, know, you talk about the disabled list and how many guys are on the disabled uh -huh. list. It, it just really tests your depth on your uh, bench, on your ball club. When you get guys, we got some activity now in the Tiger bullpen, Doherty and Hinneman. But what I was saying is, you got guys like Tony Phillips who are super, superstar utility guys, super utility guys. They can play all the positions. So when you have injuries, you get guys like this, and I mean, they really can fill in for oh, you. Yes. And they become really the most important part of your ball club. Very important. A little low, one ball, two strikes. We saw the two Tigers warming up. That uh, uh, Doherty kid, uh, he's from, from the Bronx uh -huh. in New York. Another kid from uh, Edentown, New Jersey in the ballgame. A little low, two and two. Nobody out, nobody on here in the bottom of the eighth. Scored two in the second, two in the third, and then the Tigers scored all three of their runs in the fifth inning. Well, Polito Perez, Perez pitched a fine ball game. Day today from Staten Island, New York. You know I hated to do that one before. Not really. Got him! And Phillips doesn't agree. But he's out of there. Well, we'll see. Oh, looked pretty good to yeah, me. Very good. Very good. It looked a little bit farther away from Tony Phillips because he pulled off the ball. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're hitless, <laughs> you know, it seems like everything goes against you. Yep. Of course, when you pull off like that, uh, you can't hit anything. Carry on. Finally hits the ball. He has struck out all three times that he's been up there. A lot of timely hits when he was with the Mets. He traded a pretty good pitcher for Mark Carrion, too, Paul Gibson. Oh, yes, yes. He had an outstanding job for the Tigers last year. He's had some bad swings up there tonight. Yeah. yeah. He needs to turn it up a notch or two. He's That's been right. way behind on yeah. all the fastballs. One ball, two strikes. Well, you got the adjustment to the American League. You're seeing yeah. guys that you haven't seen before. Very true. Whoop. Two balls, two strikes. Rob Deere is injured. He's got a stiff neck, so he hasn't been able to play for a few days. Uh, carry he, on playing in right field. Now he's he, who's he hitting? Who's he taking hitting instructions from? Oh, Rob Deere had uh, Walt Reniak. Uh, Walt Reniak. He, walked, uh, he worked with Reniak this winter. Boy, I tell you, he's not uh, so much on the hitting aspect, but the middle. Out. Yeah. Approaching. And he's not striking. Cut down his strikeout, Joe. Got him for the fourth time. Habian striking out the first two here in the bottom of the eighth yeah. inning. He's found the strike zone now and another late swing by oh, Mark Carrion. Four ball, strikeouts in a row. Yeah. All right. Travis Prime in the batter. He struck out once fly to right pop to first. Strike one. Boy, Habian has done some kind of job. He, and he knows his role and even though the long relief man or the middle relief man doesn't get much credit Last year and this year. 
started out with the Orioles. He was the third round pick of the Orioles back in 1982. That's Steve Parr beginning to throw down. He was number one pick, did you say? Well, he was a first round well, pick. First third round, round, third round third pick round. that was. Steve Barr, he's the closer. Oh, Steve Howe did a great job last night. Maybe it really paying some dividends right now. The Yankees uh, got him from Baltimore in the trade that they sent to Stanley Jefferson uh -huh. for Habian back in 1989. And uh, Habian got his first shot with the Yankees in 1990, and then he was here for the full season of 1991 and really established himself in that uh, wonderful bullpen that the Yankees had. Oh, for two years now, they've had a dandy. Well, I guess if the Yankees came up with five pretty good starters, we wouldn't hear much from the bullpen <laughs> That's anymore. That's right. That's right. <laughs> they lose their celebrity ship. Just outside, one ball, two strikes. There was just some club in the paper today. I'm trying to think which one it was. And with all our starting pitches, the bullpen's not going to get too much work. That could be playable if somebody can get to it. And Mattingly, oh! oh I don't think he get close, but the wind brought it back to him. And the nope. wind, yeah, the wind brought it back, and he had his glove wrong. I think he missed he had to, he, Instead of cupping it like a yeah. basket catch, he was trying to catch it. The ball was coming back at an angle on him, like right there. And if he had a yeah. perfect glove over and caught it the way he normally does, the way yeah. he normally would. All right, he, had no to, error. he had to go a long way. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, I sympathize with these guys because I played two years in San Francisco. Oh, the wind that's blew right. every day Much like worse this. Worse than this. Oh, right? it was an, every, You know, you've heard that old uh, saying: every game is an event. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, every fly ball was an event in San Francisco. Two balls, two strikes, two out. The Yankees lead by a run here in the bottom of the eighth. Tigers three. Not just banking, city banking. Stay tuned right after the game for the Channel 11 News at 10. Jerry Girard will have all the sports along with Heidi Tong, Marvin Scott, and our Emmy Award winner, Bob Harris, with the weather. He's the winner of seven Emmy Awards, including, oh, wait a minute, Channel 11 is the winner of seven Emmy Awards, including Bob Harris for the weather. Seven Emmy Awards. I always liked Heidi Tong. Never knew why Channel 7 unloaded her, but... Well, we got a new pitcher, Scooter. Youngster yeah. from New York. Yeah. Born in the Bronx, All right. six foot four, two hundred pounds, John Doherty, and he has really come on strong. He's got a nasty sinker and slider, and Sparky's going to use him as the setup man for Mark Hinneman, for Mike Hinneman, that is. Okay. And possibly, if Hinneman continues to have some soreness in his elbow and what have you, he could become the Stopper, stopper huh? for this Tiger All ball. Right. But that's how fast he's come. He's only been in baseball since 1989. All right, Roberto Kelly fouls it back upstairs, strike one. Top of the ninth inning. Yep. Hit the edge of that grass. 
grass. Stayed on the grass, he'd had a base hit. One ball, two strikes. Really young man I know is at the game tonight, Tim Heath. And he wants to say hello to his mom and dad, Ellen and Bud Heath, back in Basking Ridge, New Jersey. By the way, Ellen is one of the mainstays of the money store. I've heard of that. <laughs> All right, Roberto got himself one base hit tonight. got away with that one right there. You know, the breaking ball right up in the strike zone. That's in uh, Roberto's wheelhouse. It's amazing how well this game has been played considering the weather. Yeah. Huh? The only one error by the Tigers, that was Alan Trammell. Normally a sure-handed yeah. shortstop. The only people that really have shown much problem is the pitchers who have found a little bit of a problem finding strikes up. Tough play. They never get, would have never gotten them anyway. This is a fast infield. No, it used to be real slow. I think it's a frozen infield. <laughs> You're right. All right. Kelly leads it off with a base hit here in the top of the ninth. And now Mel Hall. Mel has had himself a good night, a home run. A single, two RBIs. And he was called out on strikes. And lined hard to right field. Taking a long look at Cleet Boyer at third. Two and zero. Oh, he's trying to throw that ball down and away from Hall. I think the only sign that uh, Cleet would give Mel Hall at this stage of the game would be the home run <laughs> sign. Of course, Mel is looking for something that he can pull between yeah. first and second. Fielder holding uh, Roberto on at first base. Big hole between first and second. At least you ought to take one shot at it. 3 0. Doherty acts like that he's having some problems with the mound. Every time he throws the pitch, he kind of looks down like there's a high spot on the mound or his foot's not uh -huh. catching the right spot. You know, we've had, uh, he's the uh, fifth, uh, fourth pitcher tonight for the Tigers. It's been six pitchers in the ball game, and everybody digs their Different. own hole. Yeah, that's right. Strike one, three and one. Well, we've covered just about every angle for the pitchers tonight. Cole, <laughs> they, <don't, laughs> they, no they can't get a good feel. <laughs> Munoz back up again. Runner going, and it's foul back. Full count, so Kelly will be going again, probably. don't believe in swinging on a three and one pitch with a right hander out there unless it is the ball that you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, right. Left hand hitter. Runner going again. Holy cow. Watch out. They get you, John Moore. And ricocheted around the booth here. That was not a ricochet romance. No, that's right. <laughs> it was not a romance. Boy, you have no chance to get out of the way. We're so clear. I've never, I've never seen him look so white. Yeah, he really is. He looks pale. a little pale right yeah. now. I thought it really hit him. Don't worry, you got two of the best glove men in all of baseball <laughs> sitting right next and to you. We him. got our gloves on. Yeah. Too. <laughs> all the things that he's done for us. I mean, we can do all we can do is add a little protection for yep. him. Right out loud. <laughs> oh, he said that's the reason he ducked. <laughs> 
All right, still three and two. Nobody out. He doesn't have a good move over there. He wields well, but he takes a long time getting rid of the ball. He can get a little bigger lead than normal. Try to get some feeling back into your hands. I guess the gloves help a little bit. Way back in the old days when you never had gloves. He's going again. This one ripped to right field, and it's in for a base hit. And Kelly will go to third easily. Boy, he had some jump. So Mel Hall has himself a fine night, three for five. Good base running by Roberto Kelly because he took off, he never looked back, and he knew that the ball was going to fall in. Uh -huh. If carry on, for some reason, uh, would have caught that ball. Of course, he's, a, he's doubled up easily at first base. But those are the decisions that you have to make. Yeah, good base runners, as you say, they know, they can judge. Nobody out first and third for the Yankees. Now there's a big run out there that's got to be gotten in and Tonable has been able to do it so far in the early part of this year. He's walked twice popped a second and struck out. The infield is halfway. That short and second strike one. Hit the center and Tartable does it again. Boy, he gets those. Ball was bobbled by Kyler, but Hall had to go back. So the Yankees now lead five to three. A big run for the Yankees here yep. in the ninth inning. They still have an opportunity to put some more on the board. Nice swing by Danny Tartable. Lines it right up the middle. And that smart base running by Roberto Kelly going from first to third. He scores easily. Yep. Getting those RBIs, Doherty will be working now to Matt Noakes with nobody out. Oh, here comes Sparky. He will not be working to Matt Noakes. I don't think he warm Muno. Muno's up. He's the only left-hander they have in the bullpen. And uh -huh, here he's he there for a purpose, so you might as well send him in to try to get the left-handed batter out. Pitching change is being made. Let's take time out along the Yankee Baseball Network for the following messages. Well, a new pitcher, Scooter Mike Munoz, a left-hander. And he's getting his shot here in 1992 along with uh, John Doherty. The Tigers are losing Paul Gibson, of course, in that carry-on trade along with John Cerruti. And Jerry Don Gleaton has also gone from the Tigers from last year. And Munoz is the only left-hander that the Tigers have in the bullpen. Oh, That's number right-handers. Hmm. Doherty had not allowed to run all spring training. So this one right now. Nobody out yet. And Noakes backs away from a breaking pitch. It's over strike one. Talking to the umpire saying that he didn't think that was a strike. <laughs> There's Hall at second base. And over at first base, Danny Tonable. 
Nice play by Tettleton, one on one. Tettleton's had a workout behind the plate this evening. Yeah. A lot of balls in the dirt. Hit all over. Put him in the whirlpool after this game's <laughs> over with. Just a little bit late on that. One ball, two strikes. Just lefty made his uh, debut yesterday. Well, yeah. Their ball. Oh, he's a how I'm telling you, he's unbelievable. <laughs> For that one, and I think the ball just came up, went right in his glove. Uh, he's deceptive. We talked about it. 250 yeah. pounds. He moves pretty good at first base. Pretty agile Here over there. There it is. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, that's an outstanding play. It is. <laughs> both Mattingly, both Mattingly and Fielder have made outstanding plays at first base yeah. to save runs. And they're walking Barfield intentionally to load up the bases. Jesse has ripped two. Line drives a double and a single. Also popped a second and struck out. We'll get an intentional walk. And that'll bring up Charlie Hayes. Yankees with a chance to pick up another insurance run. Takes the shin guard off. Charlie Hayes is playing outstanding ball for the Yankees in the field and at the plate. He's two for four tonight. Steve Farr, who was warming up before this inning started, he had sat down and the inning is lasting a little bit longer, so he's getting back up to prepare to warm up to come in the ball game, I'm sure. Ball one. So the Tiger infield back in double play depth. <laughs> you got three for three. Okay. <laughs> Look at him lean forward. I just missed two and one. Of course, the Yankees making a trade with Philadelphia to bring, bring Hayes to the Yankees. And a uh, good battle in spring training. Mullins yeah. and Hayes. And Hayes won out. Mullins was sent back to Columbus. Good break for the kid. Oh, he had a good pitch to hit. Two and two. Got a root for that kid, Mullins. I tell you, really a wonderful kid. I'm sure, you'll see Hensley before the year or so. Yeah. Bam, bam, we'll be back. So many things happen in the course of a year, but he's got to take the right attitude. And he's got to go back to Columbus and prepare himself and not get down and say, oh, well, I got a raw deal and and take a bad attitude down there. He's got to take a positive attitude. He's got a lot of kids will go back after they've had a couple of good years back in Columbus and say, well, I, I did in Columbus. Well, I have to go down and do it again. Well, you sure do. You want to come back up here. Bases loaded, one out. Oh, man, did he have a 
pitch they hit that time. A hanger that and he just found it off. Drives in two more runs. And now the Yankees lead seven to three. Well, the Yankees. Good play by Hall. You see him kick that bat out of the way? Well, you better because Tartable was right, right on, on his, his heels. Yeah. Another key hit by the Yankees. The Yankees have won the first two ball games by timely hits. And the yep. Yankees, certainly some timely hits here in the latter part of this game. Matt Kelly takes the strike. Kelly's over three, looking for his first hit. One on one. The Yankees have 15 hits. I think that no balls and two strikes on Kelly. One out. Ball two strikes. Boy, your infielders and your outfielders, they just hate this. Oh, they got to be You know, these long innings when it's cold and windy. You stand out there and it seems like it's forever. Yep. And you're saying, please, throw the ball over the plate. Let the, let, let, put, him, let him put it in play. Maybe we'll have a chance. It is tough. You get up on your toes. And, and, and you know what that does is you're, you're never in the game. I mean, yeah. you're not on your toes, like you say. You're, you're not really ready to move for the ball. You lose your concentration. Yep. Plus your body gets stiff too. Ruck him out. So Kelly goes down. And now they're two out. The Yankees put a lot of pressure on this youngster's back. I mean, when they traded Steve Sachs and just yeah. handed over the second base job to him after uh the year last year that's that's a lot of pressure it is a lot of it. the only way that they solved it a little bit was saying we don't care what he does with the bat we know he's a great fielder but I'm sure they do would like to have him hit at least 250 who is that that's Cataray oh. so Cataray now throwing they may want to save far since they've scored a few more runs here in the yeah, ninth good inning good thinking good thinking Mercer but is it Cateray? Is it he scheduled to start a game up in Toronto too? I could be wrong. I don't know. We'll try not to manage too much up no. here this year. Randy Velarde, the batter. Strike. Two balls and a strike. Yankees lead 7-3, top of the ninth. Strike two, two and two. Right now, there's not a save on the line for somebody to come no. in on the in the ninth inning. Nope. And far last worked on Tuesday, which he earned the save. Yeah, uh, 
it's got in the notes that uh, Greg Catteray is slated to start on Monday in Toronto. Oh, well, that's uh, slated to start. Slated, yeah, well, maybe he is just loosening up a little bit. That's three days from now, so he got an inning in on uh, Tuesday. Three and two, the runners will be going. Two strikes, two out. Well, one good thing, Gooden had himself a good outing today, even though he was a losing pitch. He gave up just one run in six innings. The Mets were shut out. Ah, it's in play. A high pop up. Could be trouble. Nope. Glad he's down. All right, but the Yankees pick up three, and at the end of eight and a half, it's the Yankees seven, the Tigers three. Yankees baseball has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you, friends know when to say when. The Tri-State GMC truck dealers. See your Tri-State GMC truck dealers today. Con Edison's enlightened energy program. Con Edison asks all of us to use energy wisely. All right, Scooter, we've got a new pitcher, and while we uh, go through this inning here, we'll try to bring you up. It is Steve Farr, huh? Bring you up to date okay. on things. If we get a chance. We'll get a chance. Is that Bergman? Yeah, Dave Bergman. Dave Bergman. Batting for Kyler. One time Yankee. Steve right, one on one. Well, that thing really broke. It doesn't make any difference how cold it is. You'll always see Steve Farr out there with no long sleeves on. Isn't that something? Good pitch, strike two. One ball, two strikes. That pitch looks like an anti over pitch. It does. <laughs> strike zone he just went down and golfed it to left field for a base hit that was the best pitch of all of the it pitches was. in that sequence and he got some wood on it watch him go down look at that he was just fighting it off and oh. lifts it over Hayes head into left field all right that'll bring up Gladden Bergman's at first base Strike one. Cataray still throwing in the Yankee bullpen. He's just getting his work in. For Monday. Right. Yeah, for Monday. That's foul down the right side. Nothing in two. Bottom of the ninth. Nobody out. Yanks lead by four. in makes the catch let's check out our game summary brought to you by tri-state jeep and eagle dealers advantage jeep and eagle paul had a solo home run a long one uh, back in the second inning two singles and two rbis so mel hall with a great game hayes with three singles and three rbis last inning coming up coming up with a big base hit to drive in two of those three habian went two and third innings to so the bullpen still very strong out there, and uh, he pitched himself out of a jam a couple of innings ago. So a nice job done by John Habian. Yeah, they've been just about perfect, the uh, bullpen. Strike one. That brought to you by the Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. Okay. One man out. All he could do with that one is slide it right in on him, and he hit it well, but he couldn't hit it fair. Now he be playing in back of the 
runner at first base, Dave Bergman. Outside. Strike three. He knew it. Oh, Whitaker knew it. Looking for a breaking pitch and far crossed him up with the fastball. That ball, it, look at Noakes. He's looking for the ball inside, and the ball moves back over the middle of the plate, yeah. almost on the outside part of it. But no doubt Whitaker was looking for the breaking ball. All right, two men out. And now Alan Trammell. Should do it. Kelly makes the catch for the final out and the final score. The Yankees seven and the Tigers three. Well, a good game for the Yankees again tonight, Scooter. They are perfect, and so are the Detroit Tigers. The Tigers still looking for oh, their that's right. that's first win of 1992. The Yankees are three and zero oh now, and you got to give uh, the bullpen a lot of credit. They've done the job again tonight. Perez. Uh, Struggled a bit early. He couldn't find the plate, but he held he held tight. And he's going to pick up the win tonight. Winner. So he gets the win in his first start in 1992. But once again, the Yankees with some timely hitting in a ball game. And uh, of course, they come up victorious seven to three on a very cold and looked like that we weren't even going to have a ball game. Oh, but it was uh, drizzling and rainy. They didn't have batting practice early in the game and they were calling for rain and thunder showers throughout the night but the rain held off and the Yankees pick up a win and they'll be back here tomorrow afternoon. I tell you they're gaining more and more confidence with each passing game. They just go out there and they look like they're going to be winners. I mean last year they were going out there and just trying to make it a pretty close ball game. But this year they're in command. I'd say you, it's it's really a pleasure watching them. Well, that's it from Tiger Stadium. The final score once again is the Yankees seven and the Tigers three. And be sure to join us for our next telecast. That's Tuesday, April the 14th at 7.30 when the Yankees meet the Toronto Blue Jays right here on WPIX. Now stay tuned for the Honeymooners coming right up. Good night, everybody.